ocean we gather in splendor Sunken ships and treasure Luring sailors with our songs Hypnotic hymns, promises of bliss Oh, hey, <clears throat> did not know we had just started. <laughs> uh, just looking at some of my friends' stuff. I guess James Bartley was on a panel earlier. If you haven't... Uh, Checked out James Barley. He's got good stuff. He's he's a good he's a good one to go check out. Another one is um, <clears throat> uh, Matt Imsch, Of course, he came on the show on on Friday. He's going to come back this coming Friday too. Um, he's going to be back. And then uh, what else we got? Who who was on? Today? Oh, Paul Paul Sinclair, who was just yeah. on the show when I did the impromptu werewolf stories. I'm excited. I tell you what, every time I come in here, like sometimes, you know, it doesn't matter how I feel or what's going on. You know, once I get here and I'm ready to go, I'm ready to go. I'm, I'm ready. I got it. It's, we're, we're good. It's cathartic. Uh, 
Cathartic. Explain people that what that means. Cathartic means it's like an emotional release. It's a it's kind of a five dollar fancy word. Just means that like uh you know like if if you're doing something you enjoy like like if you enjoy uh playing music because it makes you feel good that that's that's cathartic you enjoy um i don't know overweight people enjoy eating ice cream you know and, and that's that's like a legit uh, legitimate way people help with their depression it feels cathartic you know just something that makes you feel good so yeah how does how come it has to be overweight people everybody enjoys eating ice cream skinny Okay. Well, yeah, but I'm saying they eat more ice cream than anyone else. Okay, sure they do. They do. Sure. I don't even, I'm overweight and I don't eat ice cream hardly at all. Okay, but you're the exception, not the rule. <clears throat> yeah, I don't eat a lot of sweets. No, I don't like, it's not, it's not, I don't like it's sweets, not, I don't like sugar. I don't know really what the deal is now. I, I don't really have a problem with portion control. I can, I can usually control my portions. Um... I'm losing it slowly, but since the conference I've lost like 22 pounds, so... And I was in the gym the other day, and I was looking at myself, and I was like, wow, my love handles don't look like they're in two different counties anymore. <laughs> they're just on two two different sides of the same county. Yeah, so no, for you, it's the stress that, 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 that keeps the weight on. Yeah, that's what my doctor says. It's the cortisol levels are out there through the roof. Yeah. The stress is really bad. Because I don't overeat. Yeah, I mean, sometimes I, I do overeat if we go somewhere like really good, like Freitas. Yeah. Or but I mean, I wouldn't be cutting you any slack, and I'd be making fun of you and, and yeah, I know. talking I mean? crap. It, it, like, like if if his diet wasn't actually like correct, then uh, you know he, he'd hear about it. Because mm -hmm. I mean, I, I gotta have something to, to use against them. So there's that. But I don't have that, so I gotta I gotta scavenge for other stuff to use. Get what he can. It's like D and Tony. You know, I didn't get uh, donations that one day. It was, a, but it was a Saturday. Saturdays are not as good. This chair is driving me nuts, man. Last night, Anthony was on the show with us on the Saturday show last night, and uh, he his, his chair made a noise or something. And they were like, "Did he just fart?" Yeah. Of course, they assumed it was me. Yeah, and it didn't look good because it was like right after I turned my camera off. Because like my, I, I had my phone and I was using my yeah, but they phone. They thought it was me that did it. Oh yeah, well, yeah, but like like after I explained, hey, it, it, it was me <laughs> after I after I moved my chair, like because I I was having to hold my. Uh, phone as my camera and i was moving it and, and it, it was uncomfortable so i was like let me turn that off so it's not a distraction and then i get up and i move my chair and it makes that noise and i'm like <sighs> so i'm gonna I have a question for you folks and, and that that right there is a problem because we want to be able to do more work from home sometimes like like you know sometimes we have things we get we can't make it to the studio on time and that's been a problem uh, definitely going to do here. This, we, we record here. This is where we record all the podcast episodes, and we use it for the Sunday episodes. But Friday and Saturday, I'd like to be able to, and I usually come here for Blondes and Booze, but I'd like to be able to come here uh, here uh, or stay at home at least for you know you know a couple times a week. And so we need to get some camera equipment, and we want to go out and do some forays out into the wilderness. What, do we have something for this thing? God, dang. I don't think we have any WD-40. Uh, I know we had some, but I, I mean, I think we can hear a lot more clear, loudly. No, than it's, they just, can. It, it's distracting to me. Like yeah. I'm, it's like you know. So, so here's what's going on. We need camera equipment, and then we need for for Anthony to be able to co-host when we use Streamyard, which is what we do, so we can get the guests to come on, and you can see the guests because a lot of people were saying, "Hey, we love the show. We just don't like you. You're a fat piece <laughs> of crap." I'm just kidding, but they do say that, and then. Uh, so, you know, they, they, they tell us, hey, we want to be able to see the guests. I said, okay, well, then give me a camera, okay? Um, so we we need to get another webcam, a good one. I have a little crappy one at the house, and then we need cameras to go out and do what we got to do. So I'm going to do what a lot of other people do, and I'm going to ask if you guys would be willing to donate to help get that done. Because right now, all of our money is tied, not all of it, but quite a bit of it's tied up in something we got to do right now. Um, you know, so it's like you can make a bunch of money, but if you have projects to do, it costs money to do those. And I don't think it's wrong to ask for some help every now and then. Yeah. Um, you know, that's just it. I mean, I've already done what I'm supposed to do and I sold some gold while it's on the uptick. Um, but I don't want to sell too much because of what's coming. And I'm telling you right now. You never know with the way the dollar fluctuates and the way things are. I've told you before, invest in gold. 
I mean, I can't tell you enough. I know a lot of you are investing in silver, and I've had a few of you message me and tell me that, and that sounds great. But try to get gold if you can. Gold is where it's at. I have a lot of investments. Uh, yes, fiat collapse, Jordan. Thank you very much. You, you're, the smart, you're the smart kids here. This is the smart classes. So if you feel it in your heart, anything you can do will be, oh, good, look, spam. Don't you love spam risk? All right. <laughs> so if you, if you feel it in your heart so we can help us get our equipment, that would be great. Because right now I have to help somebody, a friend of ours, well... I'll just be real honest. It's one of my godchildren. I got to help him do some things and I got to do some other things like build a house. And so, you know, there's money that's, you know, I can't just go out and throw money out there. And if I tell my wife, no, I have to say no too. She's like, yeah, you want shoes? Huh? Yeah, sure. You know, the other day I let you have a, a cheeseburger. And now you want shoes. I'm like, yeah, pretty much. And she's like, no. Nope. You wouldn't let me have that $500 bottle of perfume, but you want to buy a piece of shoes? You ain't nothing but a little wussy. I'm like, geez, mm -hmm. geez, that's tough. That's that's tough. I always act tough in front of her. I'm like, what? I ain't worried about you. I don't even care what you say. And then I go in the bathroom like, <laughs> you know, you do that. You know you do that, right? Guys do that, right? We do that? Yeah. Yeah. Sure go in the do. bathroom like, I can't do nothing. <laughs> Like, you're, like a kid, yeah. giving the finger. Yeah. I'll be real honest. I'm going to tell you a true story. Nelly is going to hear Punching this for the at first the air time. When you walk off. Huh? Punching at the air when you yeah, walk I, off. Yeah, she made me mad one day. And so I was going into the shower. I was going, And I was like, oh, and I did the finger thing, you know? Yeah. Because it was something. But she was right. She was right about what she was saying. But, you know, let's be honest. You don't like people telling you sometimes that you're wrong. It's, you know. And then she comes in, and I'm like, oh, doing my hair. And she stopped. She kind of looked at me. But she can't see real good without her glasses. So she was kind of looking at me like she thought I'd done something, you know. So she gave me that look like, don't be trying to steal. And uh, I just was like like scratching my head, like doing, then I moved my fingers together and I just played it off real good. You didn't even know I was giving you the finger, honey. You had no clue. I really wasn't giving her the finger. I was giving the air the finger. I was giving the air the finger. I wasn't actually just giving her the finger, okay? Just <laughs> so you know, honey. I was, yes, I was extremely angry at you because it was something you wouldn't let me do. She didn't want me to do something. Oh, it was the uh, the video <laughs> to do the lift. Oh, yeah. She was she was you can't do that. And I was like, yes, I can, you know. And I always you know start going into like you know Rocky mode. Oh, Adrian, how are you gonna do me like that? Oh, come on. Oh, you hurt my feelings. You think I can't lift that much weight? I can lift the car, Adrian. Come on. And she's just like, no, you can't. You're old. Stop. <laughs> it's over for you. <laughs> you know. Thank you for that, Miguel. <laughs> Thank you, Miguel. So what do you say? This Here's my end of the week cult paint member payment. I already sold all the PRT cookies. And I need another box of the camera fundraiser. Love you guys. Seriously, though, every dollar we get right now is going into what we call the camera fund. We are trying to get some cameras for the house, you know, to, to use, to do. And then we're trying to get some equipment so we can go out. Because, um, and Barton, like, he calls me up and he's like, hey, brother, you need to get that 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 night vision camera. And I'm like, it's very expensive. And he goes, well, see you later. And he hangs up. <laughs> I'm like, wow. So we got we got a plan. We're going to shoplift. Yeah. <laughs> we're just going to we're going to go like in, in trench coats. We're just going to walk in there and oh, you know, grab it. And they got the little tag thing on there. You're like, dude. We got to stack two midgets on top of each other and put them in the in trench coat. <laughs> I looked the other day and I was like, I was like, I was like trying something on and they had like this big old, like, uh, what do you call those? Like those things they clamp onto your deal. And so I bought this shirt. My wife did anyway. And it's, this was, you know, a while back, but I get, I get home and it's on there. And I'm like, how, isn't that supposed to stop you from stealing? And I had the receipt. So it's really weird. I had to go back to the store and tell them, look, well, I actually bought this, but it's got the, and they're like. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> like, you know, like you're a thief or something, dude. And I'm like, come on. I didn't steal that. But whatever. Liberty says I didn't get any cookies. This <laughs> I didn't either. I didn't know we were doing the cookies this year. Um, They're selling cookies on our behalf without our permission. Yes. We're going to get you for copyright infringement. Those are our cookies. And knock on the door those better, or whatever. Those better not be some crappy macadamia nut cookies, because uh, I'm going to be really mad if you're selling macadamia nut cookies on our behalf. That is unacceptable. They need to be 
oatmeal raisin and or chocolate chip. Yeah, I don't know why. And they better not be sugar cookies. Okay, I like sugar cookies. Shut up, dude. No, they're, they're so bland and useless. No, they're not. Those are the best. They're called What's sugar. You? Sugar is an ingredient. They're named after one ingredient. They have, yeah, but they're not. They're, so, they're made it's of just, certain, just sugar. No, there's nothing up. to them. Dude, they're made a certain way that makes them delicious. There's nothing in them. That, they're, they're filled with deliciousness. Shut no, up. There's no contrasting texture. There's no nothing. Oh it's just. God, it's guy. just a white, bland little like uh, cookie of like dirt. Racist much? Okay. Because they're white. Okay. It, it, it is a certain light complected shade. <laughs> I like sugar cookies. What's wrong with sugar cookies? I'm not even a big sugar cookie eater. It's not that they're bad. They're just bland. They're just the least good. Put, put it that way. Is that what they got into this business to be doing? And if we're going to sell cookie getter. If we're going to sell cookies, we're going to sell the best. Well, those are good. I like sugar cookies. And this kid doesn't know what he's talking about. Says, P is PRT cornering the oatmeal cookies? We need to, JFA. We need to. We need to we need to corner the market. We need to get, Look, white chocolate and macadamia nut cookies undefeated. Look, Mitty is my man, woman, whatever you are. You, you're the one. Oh, white chocolate? Yeah. No. What's wrong with that? Because it's not chocolate. It's just white sugar. I hate that because my stepmom hates white chocolate, so I love it. Oh, it's gross. I love it because she hates it. I love it. Can't white stand chocolate. white chocolate. Well, it's only really good with macadamia nuts. She was complaining about genocide one day, and I was like, oh, yeah? What's wrong with that? Okay. You know, just whatever she hates, I'm just, you know, whatever <laughs> she's, I'm for it. Whatever. And that'll get you in some trouble, though, because then you'll be on the wrong side of something. I like that'll that get Nice little sugar snickerdoodle. Snickerdoodle, there you go. I guess you hate that too, huh? Like all things good, huh? He's an American. I tell you what, he's he's horrible. There's got to be Be something. There's got to be something in your cookie, like like a a topping. Doesn't? Yeah, there does. Yeah, deliciousness. That's all you need. There's some brown sugar. You 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 need more ingredients than just like sugar and flour and and more and more sugar. That's what I say about you. You need more ingredients than you. All you have is bitterness on top of whatever. The bitterness, right, Tony? More and more and more. Want wanting more? The greed. Dark chocolate is bitter and it's very very good. A little He's bit, a little bit of bitterness is really you're good. You're a cannibal. You're eating your own self because you're a bitter little man. That's what you are. <laughs> you admitted it here. Oh, why? Because I'm dark. Breaking news. Oh, that's the Rachel thing. I gotta eat dark chocolate because I'm dark. You're the one who wants to eat dark chocolate. Why you're I got the one to be white? No white cookies. Why I got to be black? Why I got to be white? white. Yeah, that's exactly it. Why you're I got to be racist. brown? All right, so racist what? cookies. Cookie lives matter, dude. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> Cover your ears, banjo. How about banjo <laughs> doodle? Hit you in. Yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly, Madeline. Anthony hates baked goods. What's wrong with this guy? I like no, no. I respect. I respect baked goods. Therefore, have better food. Uh, the bakers look, should have respect for what right they there. bake. Ananaki Bro says the real secret is brown butter. There you go. Watch out, Ananaki Bro. We got a guy who's hating on the Anunnaki. Boy, he's on the warpath. He, he hates you. He'd be coming after you. If I, if I just said I had an Aunt Annie named Naki, he'd be all he'd be up try, trying to come after me. In fact, I'm gonna start every show with my my Annie Naki. <laughs> Annie, my Annie, Annie Naki. Auntie Honey says diversity, baby. Exactly, diversity. You need the the, the macadamia. I like them all. What's wrong with liking them all? I like oatmeal raisin every now and then. You know, I get a little oatmeal raisin. I don't get to eat cookies much because my, my wife's like slap out of my hand. Like, you know, stop it. I'm you're, just saying. You're already I'm, big enough. I'm just saying cookies it. are not all equal. Some are better than you know, others. Yeah, so, okay, here we go now. Cookies are cookies. I love cookies. Here's something real quick, folks, while we wait for the chat to fill up. And I promise once we hit 300, we're off and rolling. But uh, I like cookies. Um, but I don't really, I'm not a fan of most desserts and Anthony and Tony can attest to this. None of us are really big sugar eaters. No, I'm not a sugar eater, but I, I will take a good custard every now and then. Um, what's another good dessert that I would eat every now and then? Like key lime pie. Yeah. Key lime pie. It's my Achilles heel. Small I will slice eat, of cheesecake. Yeah. Maybe a small slice of cheesecake, but key lime pie is my Achilles heel. That will get me going right there. In fact, that's getting me going right now. But the banana stopped. pudding's really good with the vanilla wafers. Yes. I, mean, I like Trey Felton's banana pudding. He's got the best everything, everything that that guy makes. The other day we went by Trey Felton's, which is the, the guy that catered our it's Thorndale Meat Market. G- great. If you're ever in Central Texas, anywhere close, just go visit him. It's off awesome. What is Beth talking about? Cheesecake yuck. What? What? Beth? Oh, come on, Beth. Really? I see you hate him. Yeah. No, so so we go there and Trey Trey's got this uh, smoked sirloin. He's like, I only got a pound of it left. 
And he said, but I'll give it to you. He just, he just put it in a box. Oh, I'll take it and so added good. it to our, our food that we had already gotten. And he always gives us a huge discount, dude. And I love the Bodan. Oh, my gosh. So we got some of the uh, the smoked sirloin, and it was unbelievable. Mm-hmm. And he made this really vinegary, uh, spicy steak sauce to go with it that was unreal. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh man. I yeah, I normally steak. don't. I don't like, like steak. I'm not a. Y'all know this. Well, I like I steak, steak, but I normally don't like sauce. I'm not a yeah. big beefy. On, on on like any of my barbecue, because like good barbecue doesn't need sauce. But that that sauce was just out of this world, and it went perfectly with that meat. Charlie Button, I'm I'm with you on that. Lemon cake with lemon frosting. That's that's good stuff. That's good stuff. Tiramisu. I'm not a big fan of tiramisu. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie to you. We're not like super big sweet eaters. Like we like a nice mild sweetness, if anything, where it's just kinda in the background. Yeah. So we got we got a, a bevy of that's that's a word you don't hear much. A bevy. A bevy of stories that can be told today, encounters of all kinds. Don't forget on Tuesday we're gonna do an interview with is you no know, the movie is what interview with the that was the big Mandela I think effect, it's right interview with the vampire but whichever one it is we we're gonna call it the opposite because I don't want it yeah. to be the same. Um, <laughs> Amy Krill says I am offended on behalf. Well, I'm sorry. Okay, that well, um, is good. <laughs> Nicholas says sweets go extinct around me. Oh my gosh. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I've been having yeah, we're, I've been getting those yum boxes, and you know for years. Oh, those are good. Yeah, I've been trying to pawn good. off the chocolate and all like the sweets in it to other people, and like I'm like, oh, no one in this house eats sweets. Yeah, but yeah. some of those are but good though. Stefan does now, so I've been giving him. We've been splitting the box with him now. Stefan's kind of like us, so he's not a real big sweet eater either. I mean, he fits in with us perfectly because mm-hmm. he's not a big, he's not a big yeah. sweet eater or whatever. You know. Yes. Sweet sweets, Gil. Yes, that's what it is. That's what it is. Cowboy four five seven two says banjo in the house. Yes, he's in the house. Mm-hmm. He's him and Elvira are the privileged dogs, because as soon as you open that door, they run out because they think that they're supposed to be outside, and they love it outside. Mm-hmm. The other the other animals are kind of like, like like they just they don't try to, like the pig. He never tries to go outside. No, he never does. No. He just like he'll look at it like. <laughs> well, he knows where his food is. Yeah. He's like, you know, food and water outside. Mm-hmm. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Panzer wants to be one of... Panzer uh, runs out there, and then he gets taken right back inside. Panzer has never been an outside cat, and, and we don't want him having to fight for his life. But I will say this. The story that I'm about to tell, because we are now at 300, we'll start off with a story. Uh, is about survival, okay? And there's two of them. So you got a choice what you want to hear. One is a dogman story and one is a Bigfoot story. And Bigfoot story, I have to tell that one tonight um, because it will go along with and a little bit tie in with the vampire story that we're going to talk about on Tuesday because the guy um, that gave it to me, Nathaniel or Nathan, he was the one that introduced me to the people who gave me the the, the woman who gave me the story about the thing that was changing in the convenience store when she ran out and, of course, she quit. I don't blame her for that one. And uh, her husband is a pretty funny guy. He was joking. He's like, oh, then you had to go and quit. And I'm like, (laughs) she's like, wouldn't you? And he goes, no, I just stayed there and worked. And I'm like, yeah, correct. He was was kidding. But, um, and then, you know, through them, of course, I met um, Cheryl, who we... I don't know his story. It's pretty compelling. We've all heard it, and you heard it. Um, and was he, or is he, a recovering werewolf? Was he a werewolf? We don't know. Um, if I had to say one way or the other, I believe him. I believe that that's very possible. And you will learn some things about the vampire culture. And they all kind of roam together. This isn't, you know exactly how it's done according to what they told me him and joel both there are covens that are just strictly werewolves strictly warlocks strictly vampires but this particular one had a hierarchy and you could choose kind of what you you know it's like a choose your own adventure i guess that's kind of being snarky but you know what i'm saying like it was choose your own path of evil for example um so anyways, <clears throat> what are we going to start off with? The Bigfoot story, which was pretty scary. And I got a dogman story that um, this person, uh, s- we were talking about the cat, and I thought it was pretty cool. So we would just intro with that one. Why don't we just do the dogman one? 
<clears throat> this one happened on the other side of Waco near an area. I believe it was Harker Heights. I'm not 100%. I got to go back and look, but it doesn't matter where it's at. Uh, the bottom line is I can't tell you exactly where because people will run over there and try to go mess with it. Whatever I tell, whatever I say. So we got to be careful how we word it. But uh, this guy, Felix, uh, his cat, and Felix the cat, right? But his cat, Brody, decided to go out, not supposed to, not supposed to, um, not an outside cat, not at all. Much like our cats, they don't go outside. Um, honey butters and, and panzer and, and uh, biscuit. They were both like not paying attention to they look up when I said biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> the heck? Uh, Martis, okay. Uh, named after the late the Scott Martin, the late researcher Scott Martis. Good friend of ours, good friend of mine. Nice guy. I miss him. I used to talk to him all the time. And uh, so, funny thing, this uh, the cat, you know, he's, he, he it looks like Panzer. He's a tabby, mm -hmm. you know. And so he was telling me, he's like, I got a cat that looks kind of like your cat, Panzer, and I got a dog man story. Been trying to tell me this story for a while, and like I said before, I'm really backed up. But I said, Hey, you know what? We should tell this story on the show, and we all agreed. So here we are. He ha actually beat this thing. <laughs> this, yeah, I don't want to say it was a dog man because I don't know if that's what it was, but it was a, a bestial type being that he attacked with a cricket bat. Now, does anybody know what that is? I don't know if you know what the game of cricket is. Yeah, yeah. like that flat, like paddle looking. Yes. Bat thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a game with like three sticks on each side. What? What? Yeah, literally, there's three sticks. Oh, I thought and, you were making they, a joke. Oh, they're, okay, they're yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Probably. Yeah, and the yeah you're right. I don't know much about the, cricket, and I try yeah. not to. It's like soccer. Yeah, same with soccer and then like tennis. Uh, and who cares? I hate soccer. And I hate people do it around me. So, anyways, this guy, he he goes outside and he let his dog out, and his cat is is he. Let's start here. He got with a girl, nice girl. She seemed like a nice person. I heard her in the background. I didn't really talk to her. But she said that, you know, she had a, she was trying to, they moved in together and she was trying to get used to letting the dog out, but the cat would try to run out. So she kept having to go out and grab the cat because Brody did, he liked to run outside. And previously prior to all this there was there was something that was happening in the neighborhood where cats and dogs were going missing um she said you know well he said it wasn't like it was you know like oh they're just every the neighbors are missing their cat and the other neighbors missing the dog and then you know people are going missing it wasn't nothing like that but it was noticeable like he said he went for a walk in his neighborhood and there was a sign up that showed a cat missing and then the next day there was a dog missing and uh, she, his girlfriend, said something about, yeah, and then the neighbors on the other side, down, down the road, that she had talked to them, and they were missing one of their dogs. And, and uh, so there was something going on. And so she, he, he, was, he instructed his girlfriend to be careful. Don't let the, the cat out. He likes to run out, and he'll, he'll go and hide in the, in the corner of the yard. And, you know, when you go back inside, he's still out there. And so he said he's been doing this since he was a baby. Now he's a year and a half old. Now he's not a baby, but still, same thing. He just he likes to do it. Cats do things like that. I love cats. We have some. And we have dogs. And I know how they are. They're like little babies, and they do what they do. And so he let his dog, she let the dog out, and the dog started barking and freaking out and going crazy. A little weenie dog, a little dachshund. I know how they are. We used to have one. And barking and freaking out. And she didn't notice. She couldn't get him under control. And she didn't notice the cat was out there. So right at the time where she was letting this, the, the dog use the bathroom, she said it was like you know, 11 o'clock at night. She was getting ready to go to bed. She had to work in the morning. She works for a school district, whatever. So the, the, the boyfriend comes home, and um, he had worked late. He had to work a swing shift at his job. So he comes home, and he's like telling her, reminds her, he says, hey, watch out for Brody. Brody will be running around. You know, he'll, and then he starts looking. And he's like, Brody's not in here. Where is he? And so he, she, he goes to the, the door, looks out. She got the dog under control. I didn't get the dog's name, but the dog has a funny name like Samson or something like that. But anyway, they got the dog inside, and he goes and he looks, and he's like, oh, crap. The cat is out here somewhere. And so he starts yelling for the cat, and then he hears, like all that noise, and he hears this, you know. And so he has these... Uh, 
lights he can turn on. They're like floodlights, what do we call it, that he put up because of what was going on in the neighborhood. He was worried that it might be coyotes. Now in Texas, there's coyotes and they look as, and I'm not joking folks, some of the coyotes here look like wolves. You'll see them and you'll be like, damn, that's a wolf. And it's really just a big coyote. And I'm not talking about the koi wolves. We have koi wolves too. Don't let anybody tell you we don't. If they say we don't, they're lying or they don't know what they're talking about. Um, we have we have koi wolves and we have coyotes and we have wolves and they're all big and the people say we don't have wolves either That is also incorrect. They say that that's not true because I personally when I was younger as a teen I saw a pack of them and they were they were wolves. I know the difference and I saw someone I was up in Alaska so <clears throat> This this whatever it was was part way from it was through the neighbor's fence and its head was sticking through the hole in the neighbor's fence because the neighbors had dogs and the neighbor's dog had, had worked on, you know, busting through the fence. And their dog, I think he said it was like a retriever or something. And they had a, a like a pit bull mix, but they were friendly dogs. He said they weren't like aggressive. So he was, he knew it wasn't them, but they were messing with the fence and his little dog was always doing it. So together they had kind of made a little hole, you know and dug under it. But he said this thing had its leg out, you know, and its head, and its head, he said it was pulling back like it was trying to pull, it had a hold of his cat. And he said that he was trying to pull the, and then the weird thing was that, it's, that it had like a claw hand, like appendage that, that, was, that was like a hand, right? Mm -hmm. This wasn't a paw, it, it was like a clawed hand instead of what should have been a paw from the, the, the leg. It looked more like an arm, like a right arm with, with, with a claw on the end of it. And him and his girlfriend both saw it. And they were like, what in the hell is that? And at one point, the cat, like he grabbed the cat, whatever this thing was. Gra I say he, I don't know if it was a he or not. But it grabbed the cat with its mouth. And then it got loose. And Brody was, he, this thing, um, now this is the part that I stopped. And I said, hold on, retell that. Get this, folks. Have you ever seen those videos of cats, the snakes striking at them? Mm -hmm. And the oh. cats just jump and the, and, the, and the snake misses? Yeah. You, the, oh, they you know how at them? Yeah, they, they'll smack them, too. Yeah. Yeah, the cats will. This, these cats are super, super predators. They're super fast. I mean, I've seen our cats do some crazy stuff, dude. Going like, after bugs. Yeah, one day Anthony was playing with Martis, and he just he, he rolled and kind of flipped, and then he just went up in the air and came boop right on his right on his feet, and mm -hmm. it was pretty amazing to see. Um, and, and so he's very agile. He's I think he's the most agile of the three, but he's he's incredibly agile. And so I heard them today; they were like fighting or something <laughs> was going on, and I don't yeah. know what was going on, but. Um, you know, Martis is very, very clever too. He can open doors, you know, but that's beside the point. So th this creature, whatever it was, reached out and caught the cat as it was getting away. Like, I mean, it was like, he said the thing was so fast. Like he got loose from his mouth and Brody turned and he said he had his butt and his tail facing us. And he was turning to try to get away and roll, and that thing just went poof and caught it with its hand. But then it was trying to pull itself back to the fence, and he said the whole fence was coming up like, you know. And he said, dude, it was it was horrible. He said, this thing had my cat. And he goes, and I didn't even, you know, miss a beat. He's like, my, my girlfriend's cousin was staying with us temporarily, and he, he's like, he's a cricket guy. He plays cricket. And so he said he was right there on the deck. And he goes, and I just grabbed one of his bats. And he's like, and I just ran over there and I just started beating this thing on the head. And like, he goes, and I'm not gonna lie, Wolf. He's like, I was, I hit it until the thing broke. And then it stopped and was looking up at him and reaching for him, you know, with the one arm. He said, and then the, the wood began to splinter and fly up in the air. And he said, he realized that all he did was make it really mad, but it let go of his cat. And the cat ran, <laughs> got back up. Uh -huh. Yeah, that was a few months ago. And he, and he said in the dead of winter. And, and he said that uh, it was like, you know, like I think early January or something. But he said, dude, my cat has not gone back outside since. Uh -huh. But uh, so he, he runs away like from this thing. He backs up and, and leaves what's left of the, of the cricket bat. And he runs inside. And they, they stare from the window. And eventually this thing tore like toward like the fence, like pieces of it were going off, whatever, and it pulled back and it, luckily it stayed in the neighbor's yard. The next day, 
the neighbor comes and, and he's in the backyard and he walks through the fence and he's like, I, as I heard this commotion and I came outside, he goes, and I saw this giant wolf like jumping the fence and, and, you know, going out. And he said, yeah, well, what did it look like? He goes, it was weird. At first it was on two legs and it was running and then it got down on all fours and then it just took off running really fast. And, uh, the neighbor was, was like in shock of what he saw. And uh, the neighbor's an older guy. He's like 67 years old or something like that. But um, the, the the point, though, the cat got away Thankfully. and relatively unscathed. It did have to take it to the vet the next day because it was bleeding because one of the nails, which he described as very pointy, like almost like spikes, had p- punctured the cat and cut it between its ribs. And so the cat was lucky that it didn't go deeper. It went in about half an inch and it didn't hit any vital organs. But... These things are nasty, folks, I'm telling you. And so he asked me the question. He said, "Do you? Th- what do you think it was? Do you think it was a dog man? Do you think it was a whatever? And I said, absolutely, it was a dog man. That was just what they do. Um, you know, I don't know. You know, I'm not a dog man expert, you know. In fact, I am. I'm going to go. I'm going to start putting that on the bottom down there. Dog man expert. <laughs> Patreon. Join the Patreon because I'm a dog man expert. <laughs> Where's it at? Right, right here. Patreon. Right there. Join the Patreon, folks. Dogman expert here. I'm going to start a group, and every time somebody disagrees, I'm going to say something to them. Dogman whisper. That's not what the dogman does. What the dogman does is something that you can never understand. <laughs> Only I can understand the dogman. And if you're a woman or a Christian, I'm going to make fun of you and tell you it's of an evolutionary thing. And somehow people believe that garbage. I don't know how, but they do. Every time somebody would tell me, that guy's so smart. He's got the best ideas about what we're dealing with. He's just an amazing researcher. I just cringe. I'm laughing. I'm like, really? It's something that evolved that way, but yet they can turn into smoke or mist. That's that's what they do. So any questions? If you got them in caps, put them in caps. I don't mean these kind of caps. I mean the caps, like the caps, like a capital letter, you dummies. Oh, dang, you stupid people, man. Dealing with some stupid people up in here. Foolish and ignorant. Let me tell you something. One time, I've, I think in my whole life, I've only been to crackle bar- cra- crackle bar- Cracker Barrel like maybe two, three times. And I went there one time, and I, and I was with my dad, and I'll never forget, we were laughing so hard. There was this goofy guy who was talking really loud, you know, and, um, and he, was, he was chastising the people at the table. He goes, y'all have got to be the dumbest, astest people I've ever been around. You're so stupid. And, like, and he's sitting there, like, putting gobs of butter on this like, piece of cornbread. <laughs> and it was like, dude... Because, you know, Cracker Barrel, I don't know if it's Cracker Barrel is like, is it nationwide? I don't know. I know it's in the South because people in the South love yeah. all that. Crackers stuff. and barrels. You know, they, well, crackers and barrels. They, <laughs> they love all that. <clears throat> they love pounds of butter on, on cornbread. Yeah. And it, when I was a kid. And lots of gravy on that. <laughs> <laughs> JFA says, any stories of a human befriending a dogman companion? Yes. Actually, I told that one on another show, but we can talk about that in a minute. Um, so get your questions in while I'm talking this junk here. So, so I was talking the other day with Anthony we were in to- and, and Nelly, everybody, we were coming back from, from Trey Felton's. I have never had like it, it, coleslaw. I've had two different coleslaws that I liked. Both of them were called German coleslaw. They're really good. Trey Felton has one. It's a German coleslaw. It's really good. I don't mm-hmm. like coleslaw. Not I like gross. to buy the bags of the coleslaw because it has like the cabbage and the and the carrots and all that in it. Yeah, and then you can mix it with whatever you want because I like a vinegar based dressing and I'll make it myself. But I won't. I don't like the mayonnaise. I don't like yeah, that mayonnaise. It's gross. It's gross, man. And then potato salad. I'm not a potato salad guy. People were talking about food earlier, and. Uh, Oh, so Auntie Honey says, Wolf, you were lively tonight. You were you were, were extremely tired last night. You worked too hard. You know, I took a short nap after. The, I did a live on Facebook earlier. Go watch it. It's just giving people an, uh, what to look for because there's somebody who's been basically harassing us bad. And so I'm not going to give them the time of day. We're not going to give them time on the show. Just go look at the video. you see what I'm talking about. So I was really tired and drained after that. And so I decided to go and take a nap. And I woke up and I felt fine. And, I'm not, and I prayed. I prayed about it. I really, I prayed and I 
just me and Nelly prayed together, and I just I feel good. I feel fine. I just I don't, I'm not going to let this person, you know, be a termite and eat the foundation out of what we've built here. Let them go and, and sulk, you know, in in the cactuses in the cactus briar. I don't care, you know. But anyway, so so what ended up happening? Um, I tried this coleslaw the other day at Trey Felt. I've been going there for a few years, and I've never tried his coleslaw or potato salad. So a couple of weeks ago, we went there. We go there once a, every week or week and a half, something like that. And we tried it, me and Nelly, because she really wanted it. And she never eats coleslaw or potato salad, and we loved it. We loved it. And so Yeah, that coleslaw is awesome. Potato salad is good, too. Yeah, uh, the, yeah, German coleslaw and potato salad should just be the way it's made. Yeah. Shouldn't be it's, German. It should just be normal. Yeah. But it was. It, I don't like the mustardy potato salad or the mayonnaise potato salad. I don't care either one. I don't like either one. But here mm-hmm. in the South, you know, and I grew up with this problem. I don't like potato salad. I'll eat it if I have to. Like I said, coleslaw. I don't like. I did. I don't like cornbread unless there's. There's only a couple different places. I like it from Sprouts and I like it from Freitas. And I don't eat it. I won't eat it. So you have all these different dishes here in the South. It's like it's like a law, like a religion. You have to have coleslaw, potato salad, and cornbread, and uh, what was the other one? Okra. No, oh, yeah. I don't like any of those. I'll eat okra because it's good for me, but I don't like it fried. And in here in the South, that's fried okra, corn br- uh, cornbread, potato salad, and and, and coleslaw. Mm. And it's like everywhere you go. That's I mean like. If you were to go and donate blood, they're going to bring you some cornbread afterwards to eat. <laughs> hey, you go, hon, have this. Oh, I don't really like cornbread. Well, you know what? We got some potato salad. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> Please, with the potato salad. And I had been to get-togethers where that was all you had. You had the barbecue or whatever the meat was that they were making, and then you had coleslaw, potato salad. So I had people telling me, well, we got coleslaw, potato salad. I could even tell them what they had. Oh, and then you have cornbread and okra. Yes, yes, you know. Yeah, of course, I'm in the South. <laughs> That's it. That you're done. And so a lot of times I would just eat meat. That's it. I would just eat, eat a little bit of meat, and then you're done. That's it. Because I'm not eating all that other crap. And like I said... I literally went to Academy the other day and was trying on shoes, and they and they said that comes with a side of potato salad. I'm like, I'm good, I'm all right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You sure you don't want the okra? You sure? You bought a T-shirt that comes with okra. I got some biscuits and gravy in the back. You now I can hold get on down with some there. biscuits and gravy, but I'm not getting down with that other stuff. I'm like, <laughs> I got pulled over one time, and the cop comes up and he's eating coleslaw. He's like, You want some? And I was like, I had to eat it. I had to get out of the ticket. I was like, ah, I love it. I love coleslaw. He goes, yeah, me too. It's good, isn't it? I love being from the South. You better like it, boy. He was like, ah, and it was flying all over the place. And I was like, hey, you know, come on now. And he's like, oh, what, 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 boy? Are you back? Are you back talking to me? You, oh. Sitting there crying while you're eating the coleslaw. You don't like coleslaw, do you, boy? <laughs> you're just trying to get out of a ticket. And you're the worst kind. I bet you ain't even from here, boy. Where are you from? California? Oh, you one of them Yankees? I said, no, 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 no. I started with my southern accent that I've been hiding for years so I could fit in. I'm like, hell no. I ain't from them damn places with them goofy ass Yankees up there mm-hmm. still thinking that they won the war. And all them Californians out there with the, the, the what are they, what are the, the hillbillies, the Beverly Hillbillies? Are you, are you making fun of hillbillies? Because I'm one of them. I said, yeah, no, 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 no. I'm saying that how they made us look. How they made us look. They made us look bad. I hate it. I hate it. And so then I just started eating the coleslaw as fast as I could. And then he said, oh, that's right, boy. Eat the coleslaw. He's like, all right, let me go get you a ticket. I'm like, damn. <laughs> the whole skit. Still got a ticket. <sighs> Tickets. Anyways, that didn't really happen. But, you know. You, <laughs> you got to be there. Right? You, you, had to be, you had to be there. Right? Okay, so we had some questions here. Somebody says here, Masochist Mouse says, how would you handle an 11-year-old watching a video getting the wrong idea of demons? I'm not allowed to tell her they're real, but she thinks she can summon them and they'll play games. Oh, my gosh. Are you kidding me? You should probably tell her they're real. I would, yeah. I I don't want to be responsible for anything this child does, but I would. Why is that happening? I need more context to answer that question. I don't think I should mess with that. Uh... Amy Krill, that is true. Potato salad, cornbread, coleslaw, and every single potluck. Don't go to a single potluck. I don't go to any of them because it's never good. That's what's always going to happen. Mm-hmm. You know, thank God, like my, my dad's family, there's countries that come, and part of my mom's family is pretty country, or most of them, I guess, are too. 
and uh, they don't they don't push that coleslaw potato salad thing on me. I'm like, I start cracking my knuckles like, mm, don't bring it to me. Don't do not mm -mm, do not bring that. Mm -mm. You know, then they know I'm mean business. I'm gonna go ahead and need you to take that coleslaw away from me. You better take that coleslaw. Go, go take that deal somewhere. I don't want that. Oh, coleslaw. bless your heart. You think I'm gonna eat that nonsense? <laughs> Macadamia cookies, just to spite mm -hmm. Anthony. It says any photos of the dog man of Hernandez Ranch because they must eat and drink. Any photos? <clears throat> not there were photos and we saw one, but we were not at liberty to take it. And all and I said this on the show the other night. It, the one we saw just looked like one laying down. I mean, it was. Which they do that often. I mean, <laughs> to hide. I guess, yeah. Um, Philip Barnes says, "What was one of the creepiest, scary ghost stories you've heard?" Man, I've heard so many, Philip. We've um, all heard so many, Tony. What do you think? We've heard a billion of them. I mean, uh, I think, I think the one of the scariest ones I saw was we were in the apartment and uh, this weird, skinny, brown, lanky thing was like walking to the kitchen across my room. So, Anthony. Oh, is that what we call it? <laughs> but that might have been. <laughs> no. Get out of the room so you could like, well, you could put the camera on you so you could say what you got to say. Cause I don't know. It was Anthony, the was de right. the beast of uh, River. Teddy Van says, "Will feel free to just send me all the coleslaw, tater salad, and any other thing to me." Wow. That sounds good, Penny. So I don't think, though, that sending coleslaw or potato salad through the mail is going to work yeah. because it's going to go bad, even the mustard potato salad. I don't think that's going to work. <clears throat> thinks demons can be our friends and play board games. like That's... That is not a good thing. I don't. I don't know what's going on there. Like I said, I, I don't. I can say this. You, you know our patrol captain. Um, we, we probably she came on the show and she she died, and then she came back and she when she did. What is going on with the drinks, man? Logan Paul needs to stop closing these so tight. But um, yeah, she died and she came back with what we believe is a sort of extra sensory perception, also known as the second sight. Um, dang, Woo. goodness gracious, there we go, it's the moisture on there. Mm. Okay, Penny, I'll get right on that. I'll, I'll pack it all in dry ice and send it to you. The next time I go to a get together, which for a while there seemed like it was every damn weekend, um, finally got some peace and quiet, but, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll make sure I get it for you. No, no, no. You can't have any of this. This is for Penny. JFA says, ever seen a physical manifestation of a ghost ghoul or any undead? Me, me personally? Are you asking me? Cause yes, I have. I think actually all three of us have seen something, right? Oh, yeah. We've all seen something. But, I mean, I lived in a house that was haunted. And then some of the early episodes of the show, I brought people on. In particular, Chief came on. And, uh, you know, he and, of course, uh, my brother and, and Scorpion, they've all talked about it. Loki came on the show and, you know, talked about what he saw. Um, there's been a lot of people. You know, Miguel, that's a good question. Josh, any stories on sky squids or sky octopus or sky jellyfish? And I got to say no, but now that we said this and somebody, I guarantee you, somebody will watch this and they will send me something. But I haven't gotten any stories of sky, squid, octopus, whatever. Not that I can remember. That doesn't mean we haven't gotten any. That just means that I haven't read it because there's about, you know, yay big, you know, just... Just, you know, if I pulled it out and printed it out, it would be this big and with lettering that big, just of stories that I haven't read yet. So it, there could be something in there. We need to go in there and look, Tony, and see what we can find. Mm -hmm. That'd be interesting to find something like that. <sighs> Jamie, when, where is the next public get-together that you guys will be at? Go watch the video I just did on on Facebook, on my Facebook, after this is over. And you'll see that what I, I, I address that because I don't know what, if that's going to happen because of this individual and people like him. Um, they don't like my views. So they have decided to build a little cabal and wage war. And I'm 
getting out of a, a war, and I'm trying to everything I can to avoid this one. Um, I guess it's just they just they love it. They just they just love conflict, you know. I noticed that during the war, I was looking at some of the people and some of the things and the way that they were acting, and I thought these people are not going to be happy with peace. They're going to find something or someone or some way. Here's what par partly what happened with that, and this is all I'm going to say, and I'm going to move on to the stories. I promise we're not going to get into a big thing. I made peace with these people, and there was resentment. There was absolute resentment. Some of the people came to me and they were like, why? And I said, because I'm tired and I want peace and the audience needs peace. We don't want, we don't want to be known as the drama channel. We're done. Let it go. They were not good people. I mean, you know, and there was a bunch of them and they were a big, you know, contingent, you know, and we did what we were supposed to do. We defended ourselves and the community and our friends. But there was a couple people in our camp who I have to say were really, they were more mongers. I'm not gonna lie, I'm just gonna tell you the truth. And when I tried reasoning with them, and then when something, some small thing happened recently, it was really not that big a deal. It could have been handled very, I mean, you know, and, and they used that so to, to, to come at me and tear me apart like a pack of jackals. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. And I told everybody that was involved, I said, this isn't about the incident that happened. This is your stewing resentment for peace, is what it was. I was attacked for peace, folks. That is the truth, that's what I believe, and that's what I think, because their complaints to other people were, well, he'll let the filthy five you know, go and be friends with them and, and, and give a pause to them, but he's not gonna do this and that for us, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, you're attacking me over something so ridiculous, over something so small, that there has to be more going on there than, than there had to be. There has to be an underlying resentment. If you throw a little piece of paper on the ground and, and somebody goes, oh, this up, oh, that, that person's not mad about that piece of paper being thrown on the ground. They're, they're at you for whatever. And during the course of the complaining that was going on, that kept being brought up was the peace. And I thought, okay, so you're really mad because I, I made peace with people. Let's just put it to, to like just to break it down to the, the base. So, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. Well, I mean, it's like that saying I always say: <clears throat> Gardeners are angry when the warriors say they're tired of war. Mm -hmm. I, I think we did the right thing. I still stand by that. I, I, I did. I, did I say that those people were good? Did I say that they were my friends? No, I didn't. I just said, you know what? Peace to them. I just want peace, that's it. And, and, and you're never gonna please everybody. And one of these people in particular, I, he was doing things during the war, and he's been doing it after the war, and he's still doing it. And I talk about him on that Facebook video, go look at it, check it out, because he might be somebody on your friends list. He may be somebody you know. He's in all these channels and all these chats, and he is a very, very angry and malicious malcontent person who tried to instigate a war between me and another podcaster, and we caught him. By the grace of God, we caught him. Because when I went to talk to him about the vicious things he had said, he tried to talk about this other podcaster saying all these things about me. So instead of jumping the gun and saying, oh, well, why'd you, why'd you say that about me? I went to that guy and I said, this is what he said. And he goes, really? Because he said the same thing about you. And it was like, then we exchanged information because this guy had typed it out. Yeah, I guess he didn't think he would get caught. But you know who you are, you know what you did, and it and shame on you, it didn't work. And it's not gonna work, so we're moving on. So, Mystical Wonderland says, this community is the friendliest I've ever seen online. I just don't get why they want to, to carry on like this. I don't either, I really don't. Like I said, some people love war. And some people get a taste for it, and they just, they just like it. They like character assassination. They like des destroying people. To me, it's like you, you have to do this. It's something you're doing because you have to do it. It's not something you lust after or you want to do it. But these people, they, oh my God, they were like, yeah, they liked it. It should be a necessary evil that you have to yeah, do, exactly. but nothing that you should relish or enjoy. That's right. And, and, and these people act like, you know, and this other dude, holy crap, he acts like he wants to, to use his gun on somebody. You know, he's going around finding, trying to find a reason, you know. And so that's why I'm worried about my safety. So anyway, 
Tengu Rose says, any more stories about scarecrows? That is a good one. Okay. That is actually something that I was thinking about a couple days ago. And so I went into the archives because sometimes we have, okay, here's how it works. Our system, which is organized chaos, sometimes uh, one of these doofuses will just throw something in. And I'll, I will be honest, Tony, it's not really you, it's the other doofus. But he'll just throw it into a fo fl file, folder, whatever. I go and I'll look and I'll be like, what is this? You know, and so I was in there and I thought about that. I was like, I was thinking about that story that we were given uh, back uh, during Halloween, I think the year before last, maybe it's two years ago. And that guy actually, uh, he doesn't even, like, he doesn't look at paranormal. He's not even into it or anything like that. But he messaged me out of the blue um, back in, like, November or something like that. And I think that was during the middle of all that chaos. And so if I wasn't dealing with the show or my job, I was fighting. And so um, I, I was watching th this uh, or little video he had made or whatever. And he has his, a son who's, like, 11 years old now. He's a little kid. And um, his son said, Daddy, he's like, there's a scarecrow that stares at me from the corner of the room. Mm -hmm. And so on the video, like he's showing like this, this it, it doesn't look like anything to me. I'm not saying it's not, you know, but he, he said he those this is where it was at. And there's like this sort of shadow, but it could be cast by anything. But he said that that's where it's at, and he goes, you can kind of see it, but I couldn't really see anything, see anything that couldn't be explained. You know, I'm not saying that it wasn't real. <clears throat> but this was the guy who told us about the scarecrow story or whatever. And so when, when, he, when I looked at that spot in the corner of the room, there looked to be like a dark thing. So I said to my brother, and my brother, you know, we, we, we talk all the time about the paranormal stuff, whatever, and he's got a good point. Like, he was telling me about that guy. He was like, yeah, I told you so. So today I ate crow, and I went to him, and I said, you were right. The guy's a weirdo. I should have been more careful. Um, but it's, you know, hindsight, whatever. He was he didn't rub it in. He didn't rub it in. I was like, <laughs> He was nice about it. I mean, you know, he didn't rub it in, and he just said, you know what, little brother, you live and you learn. You, you don't always listen to me. He was right about another guy years ago, and, and I should have been more diligent, you know, but I was in the middle of a war. What do you expect, you know? And, and everybody always criticized, oh, you act like you were being lobbed grenades at. No, but it was an information war, and people were being very nasty, if you remember. And so I was fighting. So I was being distracted, but this— um, Person, you know, he had sent me this. So I sent to my brother. I said, what do you think? You remember when we were at uh, uh, the place on Runberg? What's it called? Palos Santos. Mm -hmm. And I said, you remember that, uh, those shadows that we saw on the camera? And we had to get our camera guy to come over there and take a look at it. He goes, guys, I don't know what that is. And I, and I joke, I joke not. This guy, our camera guy, he looks like Don Cheadle. I always tell him, I said, do you look just like Don Cheadle? Um, nicest guy, though. But he, he's sitting there and he's like, he's like, brothers, I don't know what to tell you. He's like, this, it's, it's there, it's on the camera. I don't know why that you, you, you couldn't see it with your eyes, but it, it's there on the camera, but I don't know what it is. It's nothing wrong with the camera equipment. And so the people there that worked there, the lady, Sandra, that was there, she was looking at it and she was like, oh my goodness, this is creepy. You know, so we couldn't figure out what it was. We do know that someone was killed in that office, was murdered there. Uh, because one of the constables told us, you know, when they came to do an eviction, they were, which was every other week, every other day. I mean, um, and they said, you know, somebody was killed here and this constable had been working for eight years over there. And that was years ago. That was like four or five years ago. And so then, so there must have been probably a, over a dozen years ago now. But he said, yeah, somebody was murdered here my first year, my rookie year here, you know. And uh, so, yeah, it was, it was pretty, pretty weird. So I told this guy, I said, you know. That that particular spot in your house that where your, your your son's closet and he has a little girl too, I said, does it happen to her too or just to him? He says, no, he's just my son, but he's about the same age as when I started having that problem with the scarecrow at my grandparents' house. Now, if you remember, his grandpa his grandparents were raising him because his parents died in an accident, so he was like living with his grandparents, and. There was this scarecrow that was out in the, the field, and he would stare at it at night, and it would move. 
It would move, dude. And then he would he would like he would go to sleep and it would be one place, and the next day he'd get up and it'd be somewhere else. Yes, happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody. May the luck of the Irish be with you today, right? I didn't wear any green, but you can't pinch me because we're not where you're at. So, anyways, uh, th this thing would move, and he would see it, and he would be like, "Dude, this isn't correct." And one day he had a dream, and he wakes up, and there's like straw in his bed. Now, that's that's the over the, the gist of it. Go back and look at it. It's a it's a it's Halloween. a creepy story. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a Halloween episode. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure because yeah, you you said it was like it would be perfect for Halloween. Yeah, I, I saved that one, and it was a scarecrow one or whatever. Um, so here's what happened. He tells me, he says, I got a friend that I grew up with named Jason, you know, um, about to, uh, don't even need to say, I was about to say his last name, but he gave me this guy's information. And so I, I got in touch with this guy and I said, Hey, um, he said that you grew up, you know, down the road from there, you know, and he said that you knew about this scarecrow because you had a story about it. And he said, yes, I do. So he messaged me back, and I, I read the story, and we never got to talk on the phone, but I'll tell you what happened. If you want to hear the, the, the story, this is potluck tonight, it doesn't matter, I'll tell you. Or we can tell the Bigfoot story, which I think is pretty damn scary. Uh, let's get some votes here. Planet412, what's up, brother? That's hey, man. Matt. Matt. Matt and me are going to be doing a lot of work together. Why? Because I think Matt's an awesome guy, but I also think that he's headed on the way up. Mm -hmm. You watch. He's doing big things. He's already at 10,000, and I think he's he's destined for greatness. He's got a good thing going. And we you always watch. knew it, too. I mean, when he first well, that's started. That's why I had him come to the conference, because I saw him, you know, for what he was. Everybody's saying Bigfoot. Bigfoot, please. You know what, Liberty. You gave me a donation earlier for our camera equipment. So we will do the Bigfoot. And then I'll come back to the Scarecrow story because it is scary. I'm not going to lie. It's pretty creepy. Um, it was something that was not talked about on the on the show, whatever. Josie Jackson, thank you for that donation. I appreciate that. We really do. Yeah. Every bit helps so we can get reach our goal. And like I said, I don't like having to sell my gold, but I'm going to do what I got to do to get this equipment because... I think it's going to add another element to the show that we don't have right now. Sue Gee says, I quit drinking. St. Patrick's Day has lost all meaning for me. Plus, I'm Scottish descent, not Irish. Uh, isn't that how it goes? We're at the top of the morning to you. You know how to say it in Gaelic? I believe that's how you say it. A friend of mine taught me that, and now I might be saying something completely wrong, but I believe that's what they say. So, love Scarecrow stories. You know, Auntie, I will, but let me get the Bigfoot story out first. So, this is Nathan's story. Um, and Nathan, I give him the credit. Without Nathan, we wouldn't have the interview with the werewolf, the impromptu werewolf stories, um, which we're going to rename Interview with the Werewolf. And then I told Anthony I'm going to do that. I don't know if he's going to probably go and change it back or something with his little spider fingers. Uh, but <laughs> he's coming back, right? Let's is that, is that him? It has to be. I would we hope. can't misbehave once he comes because he's he's stuffed shirt guy. So he's like he's like ah, oh, you guys are acting wrong. Yeah. Um, guy, you've been off topic. <laughs> there he is. What's going on, man? What? You go see our friends from Nepal next door, or what? Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> you look kind of like them. You could go in there and say, "I am from Kathmandu," and they might give you some stuff. But now they probably know you're not already. But now that. What is that? So 100% recyclable bottle. That's just a regular old Coke? Cherry Coke. Cherry Coke. Because no, he has to be fast. I haven't drinking a Cherry Coke in years. I don't even know what soda, real soda, tastes like anymore. Um, I so, mean, your soda, I think, tastes good, too. Mine? Yeah. They're, they're, they that got probiotics. That, that, yeah, you can't drink too much because it's got that, uh, what do you call that, apple cider vinegar in it? Mm -hmm. Your stomach start hurting. You'd be like, oh, I drank three of those today, and my stomach's hurting. Why? Because you drink too much of that. So here's what happened. Nathan is one that got, got me in touch with the, the guy, Gerald, who's the werewolf, or was, and then Joel, his, his aunt's uh, boyfriend or whatever, drug dealing partner that became the vampire. Um, and it's, if you're new to the channel or you don't know, it sounds crazy when you say it like that. But when you listen to the story, you'll know what they, it's, it's basically just dark magic. I'm telling you folks, yeah. it's real. 
It's a real thing. And I'm so sick of everybody trying to dismiss it because the devil is real and it's doing what it does. <clears throat> well, thanks, Matt. Now I know. He says apple cider vinegar will give you ulcers. Great. Great. Well, now you tell us. Oh. I already drank a bunch of it, Matt. Why didn't you tell me earlier, man? We were on the phone yesterday. Actually, we were on the phone earlier today. Why didn't you tell me then? I've been pouring I'll be sending apple. you our medical bill. Game over, man. Game over. Why don't you put Banjo in charge? You can pay for our doctor visit. I've been pouring apple cider vinegar right onto my ulcers. <laughs> mm-hmm. Hoping that they would go away. And it's got worse. <laughs> Damn, what is wrong with these people, man? You tell me after the fact? It's bad if you drink it in large amounts. Yes, X. We only yes, take it in. Figured that out now. That thanks to Matt. I mean, probably I wasn't supposed to be. He's and coleslaw, and he's a Yankee. He probably eats it just, you know, to, just to rub it in. What do you mean? I'm not supposed to be drinking this this liquid that smells like crap and tastes terrible and and it just does not want to be well, drank. If you, it, if it was sentient. It would, it would, it, it would say, give all the signs that it does not want to be drank. And he wants us to drink it. I'm in not supposed small to drink amounts. it. What do you mean I'm not supposed to drink in it? In small amounts? Are you insane? I only drink it by the large amounts. Everything in large amounts. It doesn't matter what. Everything's it is. bigger in Texas. Everything. Even when I was a kid, I drank out of the toilet once. I drank the whole toilet bowl. Never did that thing because my cousin did. My cousin Donnie, you know you did. Don't try to say you didn't. Um, so M M. It says E M M E. I don't know what is that. Six nine one O says aloe vera will cure ulcers. The problem is though, Nelly looked into that, and she, you're not supposed to drink too much aloe vera. There's another thing, something about that that I'm not supposed to drink it or something. Yes, sugar seeds, Olipop is good. Oh yeah, but I like uh, poppy. P O P P I. That's, my, that's my Michael Guerra said that he read in the National Enquirer that three cans of Shasta sodas will cure ulcers. Well, that, that's probably where you get your information from. You're probably right. That's mm. where you get all the smart people go mm-hmm. and get their information. That and Facebook. Mm. So let's talk about this. So, so Nathan gets in touch with me and he says, I got a story to tell you. I live in Mississippi. And he says, and I got to tell you something, man. He goes, you know, but th- th- didn't ha- this didn't happen in Mississippi. It happened in Alabama. And he says, I, li- I, live, I live near the coast. He goes, but there's a, there's a heavy, thick woods where I, where I grew up. And he said, I, I ride my foiler all the time, me and my brother. And he says, me and my brother, all the time we were out there on our ATVs. Once our dads brought home those four-wheelers, because they were at a, at a state sale or an auction, whatever they got, they, he got them. And he said it was a lucky deal. And he said, he was, we weren't real well off. He goes, but, but it was like the coolest thing ever. We had like eight acres of land. And he goes, my dad got us these four-wheelers. And there was this big area where we'd ride around on them. And then sometimes we would go through the woods, and and we kind of made our own trail. And he said, but one day, and he goes, and there was no warning (laughs) at all, nothing. Like, there was never any, like, well, we heard a grunt one night, and we heard something in the, you know, whatever. And then something tore up our tomato garden. You know, know, there's, there's, there's like a prelude to this. It's like an opening salvo oftentimes, right? And they'll say, you know, well, my dog was acting crazy, and he went out there, and, 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 you know, whatever the dog's name is, Fido got into it with something, you know, nothing. There was none of that. He's like, we're out there, we're riding around on our ATVs, and he says, dude, we had this little hill that we would jump. It wasn't real big, you know, but to us, it was so much fun, and we would jump it, and we, we kind of made, like, a little track, you know, and he goes, and it was the neighbors. The neighbors had, like, 25 acres or something like that, and five of those acres were solid woods. And they would just let us ride around in there. And then he said, then there was another little clearing and then like another like several acres of just woods, you know. And then going back a little further, it was just woods, 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 and then like a pasture. And he said, so we would just, the neighbors were cool. They didn't care. They let us drive as long as we didn't tear their 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 grass and stuff up, which we made sure in certain areas not to spin around or whatever. He goes, we were responsible. We were very responsible. Hey, Bigfoot Michigan Rob, how you doing, guys? If you don't know Bigfoot Michigan Rob, go subscribe to his channel. He's got an amazing channel. He does great work. <clears throat> but he said we were out there and we were riding our four-wheelers. He's like, and my brother, he's like, he, he pulls up next to me, which is ridiculous. So the way that, we, you know, he's like, that's dangerous. He's like, there wasn't enough room. You know, it was like maybe enough room for, for me to have my ATV and maybe a half of another one. And he goes, my brother pulls up next to me and he's like pointing, pointing, because I'm not looking, I didn't see this thing. He's like, I had like a helmet on, you know? He's like, and I look over 
He's like, and I see this thing running, like running along, like parallel to us. And it's slowly like coming in at an angle. And he's like, and I look and I look and I'm going like, what in the hell is this thing? And he says, growing up, he goes, I had never read a book about Bigfoot. I knew what it was. You know, he's a young guy. He's in his 20s or late 20s. He's like 28 years old. So to me, he's a kid, right? So so he's a youngster. And so he he's telling me, he's like, I see this thing running. And I'm going like, it's going to, you know, cut us off. And he's like, I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, this thing is massive. It's huge. He says like nine foot tall. And he said that it was solid black. And he said that when it when it turned its head to the side, he said it looked kind of ape-like right in here in the muzzle area, but it had these oh. big, it had this big like kind of underbite where the jaw looked, it almost looked deformed. He said, I could see it very clear. It was like this, and he could see these two teeth kind of sticking up. And he said it looked kind of orcish looking like you'd see in some of these games. He was telling me about some some stupid game y'all play. I don't care. Look at Tony. Tony's like, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> That's Anthony. All my yeah. games are crazy. Me and my cat Biscuit, we were just like, what in the hell are you doing, man? But <laughs> so anyways, he's telling me about this. You know, he says, dude, I'm looking at this thing. and I'm going, what in the hell is this? And he's like, and I'm, I'm about to, it's come, you know, getting critical here. I'm about to run into this thing. He said, then he says, I go past it. And then my brother passes. He's right behind me. And my brother's just like screaming, go, go, go. He's like, and you can only go so fast because you're in these trails. Now I know about this because I used to ride my bike in these trails, you know, and there was this demonic uh, ogre that would come out and, uh, yeah, he would uh, he would chase me around. And he I chase me with a fireball, lightning, and, and water, some, and something, something. Something, yeah, some kind of like chain lightning or something came out. And I, I defended it. I, I, I blocked it. And my, my, my bike went up in the air with my alien friend, and we went over the moon. Um, no, that's not what happened. But uh, it, it, we, just, we, just, we just flew. The moon wasn't even there. So what ended up happening, though, this guy, he tells me, he says, we're on these four-wheelers. He's like, and this thing, he goes, and, I, and, I, and, he goes, and then it hit me. He goes, I, I hadn't thought about it. He goes, but this is a Bigfoot. It's got to be. This is what it is. That's what that is. And he's like, and so we're hauling butt, and we're going. And then he goes, we get around this one, one place we call the Loops. Where it was like there was these trails going around these little uh, tr clump of trees, and so he goes, we go up, down, and, and you know, like you kind of hit this one spot where you go up a hill at the time that you're trying to take this turn, this curve. He says, and then we go down, and then you have to take another quick left, and he goes, dude, it was horrible because that thing just went straight through. And he goes, and then it, and then we luckily, we passed by it again and it ran and it got behind us. And it was behind us again. He's like, and I'm going as fast as I can. He goes, and then I almost wreck. I come up on my, my, my wheels come up off the ground. He's like, and I'm about to hit a straightaway, a clearing, and I'm fighting hard, everything okay? He's like, I'm fighting hard, about to hit this clearing. He goes, and there's this one spot and if this isn't divine intervention, I don't know what is. He said, but then you come up to a barbed wire fence. He's like, and they were working on the fence. And they had told us, hey, we're going to, you know, we're going to close this off. And he said that uh, at that point, the fence came up to about maybe 10 feet that they had stopped right there. Mm -hmm. So he had just enough that he could hit that clearing, him and his brother. He goes, and they were working on that fence the day before. He goes, and they must have just stopped, just getting gave us just enough room to, to get through there. And he said, if it, if it would have been any other way, he goes, we would have been stuck up against that fence. He's like, and he goes, we would have been screwed because there's nowhere to go. You would have had to turn around and try to go, and the trees are thick. You know, he goes, we would have been screwed. I mean, there was nothing we could do. We wouldn't have been able to get through that barbed wire fence. He's like, but fortunately for us, the barbed wire fence ended about, like he said, 10 feet from us. So he goes, we saw it and we just, we just booked it. Boom. We kept going. He goes, we got into that clearing and we gunned it. He goes, and we look back and this thing's still running after us. And we were getting further and further away from it. And then it just eventually stopped. And then it just kind of like veered off and went toward the woods. And then he goes, I look back and I see it standing there in the woods and it's bellowing. Now, this is my words, not his. Mm -hmm. but he said, it's like making this, this, like this noise. Like, and he goes, dude, 
as far away as we were, he goes, I could still feel it like coming through my back and coming out my chest. And he's like, it was unbelievable. And he goes, and it rattled into my helmet. He said I had to wear a helmet. My mom would always get on to me, you know. Um, and so, you know, he's like, dude, it was, it was crazy. And he's like, and we got away. He said, but that wasn't the end of it. He goes, what ended up happening? He goes, we, we, we went all the way around and went through the neighbor's property. And he goes, and these people have these three really, really nasty, mean dogs. So we had to cut through their property. And one of them, there was a guy who was a couple years older than them that they went to school with. He was out there in his car and, and he was talking on the phone with his girlfriend or whatever. And um, he said, dude, he was like, he waved at him and said, what's going on? And of course, they're teenagers, right? And he, they, they pull up to try to talk to him. But the problem, hey, thank you, man. I appreciate that. So the problem, though, is that he goes, they're, his dogs were these really, really mean dogs. And one of them was a really, really nasty husky mix, a German Shepherd mix, and it liked to bite. So they didn't want to stop. So he was trying to get his dogs, you know, because he's not expecting them to just come flying out from the other side of his property, you know. And so he's trying to grab the, the really mean one or whatever. And then they, they, they kept going. He goes, we just kept going because we were so scared. He goes, and, and the, he could tell that there was something wrong. So he got in his car and he drove, you know, he was his brother's age. He was, was 16, he was 14. And him and his brother we started talking. He pulled up and he says, what's going on? What's wrong? Because they just kept going. You know, they didn't stop, you know. And he said, dude, it was a big mess. We were, we were terrified. He goes, my heart was beating so fast. He goes, I was seeing like stars. My, you know, He said, I, I don't know what, what my blood pressure was. I told him, I said, what do you think your blood pressure was? He goes, I don't know. I must have been through the roof. I was like, you had to have been like in hyperdrive. He said, dude, the adrenaline didn't come down for hours. Wow. He said, I was just like, I was, he's like, he said it was like he had drank three monster drinks. That's what he said. Ooh. He goes, I felt like my heart was going to come out of my chest. He goes, we couldn't even talk. He goes, we get out to the road. By the cat, there's like a cattle guard right there, right? He goes, we get out to the road by the cattle guard, and we start talking, and we're talking over each other, and we're like, I just saw this thing, you know, this thing, and we were screaming, and he goes, and my friends, uh, fr fr my brother's friend, we called him Buddy. He said, Buddy was like, dude, calm down. What what's what happened? What happened? He's like, tell us, tell us, tell us. And he said, he goes, oh no, he's like, there's something out there in those woods. I've been telling my dad. Because one of our dogs came back all tore up, and we had to put it down. And he goes, and then he said, then I realized that there were only two dogs instead of three. So th this thing, whatever it was, had killed one of his dogs, or unalive did, as they say on YouTube. Shad Viking, thank you for that. He says, I lost G plus seven bucks salute. <laughs> the, my last G, but thank you, I appreciate that. Um, we gotta get those cameras. But so what ended up happening, he tells his friend, he says, he's like, um, He's got his weapons on him. He says, let's go, let's go get it. Let's go, let's deal with this thing. And he, they're, they're terrified. They're like, no, no, hell no. We just want to get the hell out of here. And so they were going to have to get back on the road, on a gravel road, and ride their four-wheelers through the gravel road, or whatever. And so instead of doing that, um, they decided they were going to, he said, we were so mixed up, so turned around. We decided we were going to get in the car with him and then have our dad come back, and we were going to load the four-wheelers back up. And then we just decided to leave them there. So we got in his car, which was a really nice, fast car, and he, he took off. He goes, the whole time we're looking through the tree line to see if we see it, you know, and we don't because it's way on the other side of the property, more than, more than likely. And he says, so we, we, we get back to the house, and then my dad comes home, you know, about 6 o'clock that evening. And he said, what are you boys so shook up for? And he started telling him. And his dad just kind of dr drops his head. And he's like, well, he's like, they exist. He goes, when I was a kid, I saw one. He's like, but uh, it didn't do anything. It was just, it just kind of looked at me, you know. Uh, it was a light brown color. It didn't, it didn't do anything. We were like, you know, looking for crawdads and me and my friends and nothing happened. So I just assumed they weren't, you know, aggressive or mean or whatever. And I didn't think nothing of it, you guys being out there. He's like, we never seen one around our property. But the, 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 the kid that they called Buddy, he says, he goes, yeah, my, my dad said the same thing. When he, when I told him that I saw that creature sniffing around my window one night, he's like, I was in there playing Nintendo uh, with my little little brother or whatever, and they were playing a game together. And he said, and it was spring, and we had the, the window open, and we hear this grunting noise, and then we hear like sort of like a gurgling. We didn't know what it was. He goes, and I look, and I see this thing down looking in our window. 
And we all were just like, whoa, you know, my brother, my little brother and his friend, we were all freaked out. It was during spring break last year or whatever. He, this is the story he's telling. It didn't happen this last year, but you, you yeah. get what I'm saying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so his dad looked at him and he says, you know, your dad said something to me like that, but I didn't take it very seriously because nothing happened. But here's the weird thing. Remember what I said? He had three, three vicious dogs. This thing was on his property looking at him through the window, and where were the dogs? Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, and so I asked him, I said, did you ask him where the dogs were? Uh, General, is the Ouija board real or myth? That's real. Yeah, definitely. So so this is, this is what he said, dude. He said, I, I, I couldn't believe that the dogs didn't react. It's, uh, it's a crazy thing. The dogs didn't do anything. But one of them, I, I guess, tried to eventually. And he said, so we go back outside, uh, or we go outside with my dad, and he had his rifle, and, and we had a gun. You know, these country people, they like I did. I grew up shooting guns when I was a kid. I don't know how many other people did, but I did. I grew up in the sticks first 15 years of my life, and then I moved to the barrio. It's like culture shock. So, um, you know, people like to say, well, you're a shitty boy. I'm a hillbilly, and that's my roots. That's mine, too. I got made fun of by the way I talk, so I learned to talk differently and enunciate differently because when I came to Austin, I talked like this, and people said, well, you sound stupid, and so I tried to change how I talk, and I did. It's no offense to anybody, but I had to survive in an inner-city school. So what ended up happening, right? These people... They watched a documentary about Bigfoot, you know, he goes, and I can't remember what it was. It was on some show. And he goes, and my, my brother's friend, he goes, and I keep, he keep, keeps calling his brother's friend. I said, is this guy not your friend too? He goes, well, I'm trying to let you know because, you know, that's what I say. It's my brother's high school friend, whatever. He said, but he, but he goes, they used to always pick on me. So I didn't really like calling them my friend because they'd always pick on me, you know? And so I know how that is. I say, yeah, I know how that is. My, you know, I have an older brother. So he calls him and he says, hey, check out this show about Bigfoot, you know? So they were watching it. He said, so they got really into it. So then he goes, and then we decided one night, we got a couple of my friends, a couple of my brother's friends, and we all got together and there were six of us. He says, and we had rifles, we were ready to go. And we were staying the night over at Buddy's place and he had this big loft that his dad was like a, a, a carpenter, nice guy. You know, according to him, he said the guy's dad was a really nice guy, and he built a loft attached to the garage. And, like, they just turned it into, like, a big playroom. They had, like, a, uh, what's the game that I hate with the sticks and the balls? Uh, billiards. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> for years working in nightclubs, never was good at pool. Uh, I mean, it's funny. People say, you want to play pool? I'm like, you're going to beat me. I suck at it. I don't try. Anthony, you play it sometimes. But anyway, so they had a, a pool table there. So they're in the, the playroom, as they call it, and they have the loft, you know, and they had like four beds up there. He's like, it's a really cool, cool deal. You know, when you, you're country people and you, you get a little money, you know, you can do all kinds of stuff because you got your own land, you got your own. It's, it's, it's a nice living, you know, it is. Um, and so they were out there and they were, they were like, you know what, let's go out there and let's find this murdering son of a bee. You know, he, he's, it's what he's done, you know, whatever. And so they get their guns and they, uh, they decide to go out there. They go walking out there. He said, and we weren't even like up to the freaking, right past the clearing, up to the beginning of the woods. And he goes, and we get there and we hear like footfall. And he goes, one of them said, I think that's a hog. One of them said, no, 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 that's a, that's gotta be a deer, you know? And they're trying to figure out what it is. And then somebody said, that's on two legs. He said, one of the older boys named Trey said, that's on two legs. And then right then they hear like something slapped a, a tree so hard that it cracked. The tree sounded like it was cracking and breaking. Like a Louisville slugger hitting a tree over and over again. And then, Linda, in your dreams, oh my gosh, thank Whoa, you so crap. much. That will really help get our cameras. Thank you so much. Especially because Barton told this guy that I needed a night vision camera, so now that apparently is what we have to have. Okay, but we might not need the $1,000 one, though. I'm really? Well, we still got to get the webcam, too. Yeah. And I need a better one for me. That's I look weird. 
But it doesn't need... matter. We can get by with what we need. But thank you, Linda. That goes a long ways. Thank you so much for helping us. We really appreciate that because we do need to get this equipment going. And apparently a pair of hiking shoes is expensive as all hell, which is, I think, highway robbery. Why does it got to be over 100 bucks for a pair of hiking shoes? I mean, the, the, they do last forever, but... Not for me. Well, well, yeah, but it still doesn't justify the price. Put it that way. So, Linda, you rock. Thank you so much. And thank you for all the people who've helped and donated. And even if you can't, thank you for being here and watching because the views help. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And like I always say, our subs are real. We hit 33,000 today. And that's another reason why I'm stoked. And our views are real. Our comments are real. Our likes are real. Um, speaking of Barton, he sent me this thing the other day. It was a, a little notice that they, it's on my phone. And it shows you how you can buy all of that crap. And they give you the prices, too. And, folks, it, it's, it's not even that expensive. And then all you got to do is make AI-generated stories, and voila, you have the channel of whatever. You know, it's, 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 it's a damn a sh it's a crime. It's a shame. And I wish, I hope and pray that YouTube cracks down on all that and puts a stop to it, helps us, the real people, to separate the wheat from the chaff because it's ridiculous. I put a lot of hard work, blood, sweat, and tears into this show, and I'm not going to let termites eat it out from under me or warmongers get me into another war, and I'm not going to let crazy people say all kinds of insane things. It's not going to happen. We're not going to let them destroy us, folks. It's not going to happen because people like Nathan and his stories need to be told. So back to Nathan's story. So what ends up happening? He says, we're right there in the woods, in the edge of the woods. He said, we're not even like a few feet in. And we hear that crack, bang, bang, bang. And then we hear, Rrrr! I'm trying to prolong it because it was long. He said it was a long, he goes, and it went through my face and up into my neck and out the back of my head. He goes, I felt like I had been hit with some sort of radio wave of some kind of something. It was insane. He goes, and thank you, Bigfoot Michigan Rob, for that. Appreciate that. $33 for 33,000 subs. Mm. Way to go. I appreciate that. Bigfoot Rob, great guy. And Rob, speaking of Rob, his story is pretty incredible too. Mm -hmm. It's in my book. And it goes through his jaw. He goes, I felt like my face, and even retelling it, I could almost feel it. And he said, I could feel it in the back of my throat. I could feel it in my face, in my jaw. I felt like my face was going to just, it was going to fall off of my head. He's like, and I dropped my gun. He's like, and I, I fell down to my knees. He's like, and then I hear, too, 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 too. And all these boys I'm with, they're shooting and just at nothing. They don't even know what they're shooting at. They're just shooting. He's like, and two or three of us had, had, had just pulled out of the woods and fell backwards. Daniel satanic <laughs> eyebrow. Uh, yes, of course, you know, because everybody knows you got to be satanic, you have to have eyebrows. Um, yeah, whatever. So he goes, we, I, we grab our guns, the ones, ones that, that had fallen backwards, you know, and, and were falling down, my bad. He's like, and then they were shooting and everybody was shooting. And finally, my brother tells everybody, stop, stop, you know, we're going to kill each other, you know. And so they're shooting in different directions and they all just take off running in different directions. But all kind of heading toward the same destination, but just zigzagging, you know, running. And he said, dude, after that, though, and he doesn't know what it was. He doesn't know if it was the gunfire or the activity or what. But after that, he goes, we never saw this thing ever again. Nobody on that property or his other neighbor's property. He goes, or our property. Nobody saw it again. He's like, I like to think that our bravery and going, even going out there to confront it, maybe ran it off or you know, possibly saved our other livestock and pets from being killed. But he said, I'll say this. He said, our neighbors had cattle. And we had some goats. He said, and rabbits and some chickens. He said, and our other neighbors had cattle. And none of the cattle, none of our goats, none of our sheep, nothing was killed except for the dogs. The other neighbors had lost a dog, and then his other you know, friend lost a dog. But he said, you know, a few years after that, on the other side of the county where he lived, he said he had a girl that he went to school with, and they had just gotten out of, they were, you know, graduating, whatever. And uh, he said that, that, that she went to a different school, and she was dating a friend of his. 
And he said that that girl told him one time when she was driving home from work, she had a job at a grocery store. She said this thing came up out of a ditch and it looked like it was holding like a, 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 a deceased deer or some type of hoofed animal by its leg and it dropped it and just took off running alongside her vehicle and began to like try to hit the side of it and it broke her windshield. It scared her so bad that she wouldn't drive at night over there in that area anymore. And she would drive four or five miles out of the way just to avoid, because she wanted to, you know, avoid that area to keep from getting attacked by whatever this thing was. So he goes, that was the last that he had ever heard of it. He goes, but for, for us and the people that lived over there where we were at on our side, nothing, nothing at all. He's like, I like to believe that we chased it off. You know, it was because of our efforts, you know, to shooting. He goes, maybe we hit it even. He goes, I don't know, but there's no way to know because we were just shooting in all over, you know, different directions with high-powered rifles. But um, what's going on? Uh, I have a call. Again? Oh, no, I mean, like, I have a call from Mark. Oh. Close that door. Go in and see what he says. Um, no, I mean, like he's got to go. Oh, you got to go answer the call. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we got to record, so I'll be back. Yeah. Yes, Planet Four One Two. Dogs are family. That's absolutely right. That's the, that's correct. You cannot let people mess with your pets. And if anything, I, I can totally understand that because I would risk my life and limb for my animals. I don't care which one, even my fish. You don't touch my animals. You don't mess with my animals. That ain't gonna happen. And I would have done the same thing that the guy did, you know, in Waco. I would have beat that thing with a cricket bat or, or, a, or a rake or whatever's out there in the back. What do we have out in the backyard? A rake? A crap? Yeah. I'll do whatever I got to do because you ain't hurting my animals, man. I'm sorry, man. That ain't going to happen, man. That is just not going to happen. And so the, the, thank you, James Leto, for that. We appreciate that. And so, it, you know, when you, it stands to reason, though, that if, if you know, something, yeah, 600 people in the chat tonight, right? Despite the efforts of some of the warmongers, we still have a, we're, you know, we're, we're here. And what's up, uh, Elastic Machinery? Ken, how you doing? Really good guy. Nice, good friend of ours. Good friend of the show. I see Shade Viking here earlier. I don't know if he's still here, but he's a good guy. 86. How you doing, 86? Danita. I want to thank everybody for showing up and, and being here today for 33,000. That's amazing. But we're moving so quick that we'll probably hit 34 and then 35 in no time. Um, 33 is not really a goal of ours. It's our goal right now is to hit, get to 35, and that'll be a big celebration, and then we'll try to get to 40. But uh, at the rate we're going and the rate we're growing, we'll be there in no time. And despite people who want – exactly, Brett, I was just about to say, he said heretics, the lot. <laughs> Yes, despite people that want to call me satanic and talk about my eyebrows and say that I'm, you know, whatever, let them say what they want to say. Who gives a crap? Okay. Let them talk. Any questions, anybody? I'm going with a little different format here, a little, you know, after, after a story. People have a lot of questions. So if there's questions, because sometimes, and, I, and this is a, something that was pointed out to me by my wonderful wife, she says, you know, sometimes people have questions and you always have details that, you know, whatever, because I'll share with her or Anthony or Tony, we know, y'all know the details to the story, you know, the whole story. And occasionally there's a little more to it that I don't always tell. Not that I don't have the memory, but I have a lot going on, especially right now. So I try to do my best. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Mickey G. I appreciate that. Uh, yep, yeah, you're right, Ken. Trimming the fat, shedding the mess, we're making momentum. Thirty-three thousand chat. You were here. Brett Lawford says, any idea why the animals sometimes, and that's it. That's all he said. <laughs> Brett's like, and then I like, and then, like when you write on a postcard, you run out of room. Yeah, so I was eating at the, well, I guess that's all they're going to get of that, you know. Um, not going to say that word, and uh, but thank you for the donation, nonetheless. Great channel, been following for years, even though I don't say much, I prefer listening. Um... 
Morgan says, Josh, I sent you an email like 10 times, won't go through, but I keep sending. I think I have a video and a picture of a cryptid person. Okay, Morgan, all right, if you can't send it through the email and or if you think it's not going through, which could be the case, send it to me through Messenger on Facebook, if you're a friend with mine, or you mm. can send it to me to Josh Turner 940 on the um, on uh, Instagram. Why the animals sometimes freak and sometimes not? That's a question we've been trying to figure out, right, Anthony? We have been racking our brains on that one. Yeah. Because sometimes these animals will, like the dogs, will respond, and then other times they don't. And, in fact, we did that the other day on a show. We, we, we did the uh, discussion of that on the show. Um, I, I don't know. It's That's a weird thing. And even cats. Like, there are people who live in houses with spirits and ghosts and stuff. And, the, like, the, okay, we had one from, uh, not not Minnesota. What uh, What is the other state that nobody cares about up there? Um, Montana. I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> it was Montana. I'm joking. Yeah. I'm joking, people. Montana's a very beautiful place. I've been there a couple times. It's nice. Yeah, I want to go there. I've never been. It's really nice. Big sky country. Beautiful place. It's very sparsely populated. <clears throat> so, these people lived in Montana, and they lived in a, in a haunted cabin, I guess you could call it, and it was their vacation home. They actually lived in eastern Oregon, but they went to Montana, which is right next door, to vacation. And so they had a shadow being that would appear, <clears throat> and they had two cats and a dog, and, and a couple times they just brought them with them, you know, because they didn't, they, they sometimes they'd have a sitter, and it would allow them to, because the cats and dogs weren't comfortable at that place. Mm -hmm. But they would get a sitter, but then they said they couldn't find one so to, to, to house sit, so to watch their pets. So they had to bring them with them. Well, they had one cat that would react, and the other cat wouldn't. It wouldn't. It just would not. He's like the shadow thing would walk right by it, and the cat would just be sitting there like, you know, and the other cat would be like, <laughs> freaking out and even jumping over the other cat and being like, you don't see that? What are you doing? I, you know, I don't see it. And he's like, how can you not see it? You know, and it, it's just, that's what happens. I wonder if the breed of animal ha has any sort of effect on that. Or or is does it maybe, does it vary similarly to how it varies from person to person? Does it vary from animal to animal? Because some people, they just, they have the, uh, the ability to see these things and to perceive them and others don't. Does it, does it work that way with animals too? I mean, like maybe... We assume that they can see, uh, they they can perceive this phenomenon, like all just across the board, all dogs and cats can. But mm -hmm. I mean, is that really the truth? How, how do we know that? Yeah, we don't know. Yeah. And there's really, we've looked into this question too, folks. Um, there was a story we got out of uh, uh, not Louisiana, uh, Arkansas. It was in southern Arkansas, and this guy told me a story. Now this is a good one. And now this is a good one for the show. Um, and it was a black panther type creature. And I didn't stand up on its hind legs. It didn't do anything weird. But it did disappear. Now, it didn't just disappear. It would reappear and then disappear. So it was literally a phantom black cat. But he said it wasn't very big. It wasn't like one of these, like a huge panther, like scary, terrifying. He said it was like maybe twice the size of a house cat. And he thought maybe at one point it might have been like a hybrid stray or something. But then his wife told him, he, she goes, you know, his name's Thomas. I remember that. But she told Thomas, she was like, you know, Tommy, that cat could be a ghost. And they had barn cats, you know, cats that would run around in the barn, mousers, mm -hmm. you know, chase the snakes out and whatever. And he said that, that some of them would react weird that they when they when he saw it the first time it was at the at the front of the it was just walking right by the front of the barn and the cats were like hissing and acting crazy and he said but his little dog was just sitting in a rag bag in its tail he's just not even noticing <laughs> it and then another time he was with his bigger dog he had a bigger dog he had a uh, i think he said he had a uh, pyrenees and this dog went ballistic when that thing showed up by the house it just went crazy and he had to hold it, and the thing went and jumped over a fence, which is weird because why would something that's a phantom need to jump over a fence? Yeah. It jumped over a barbed wire fence. He goes, and as it walked out into the the, like, the clearing, it was like just gone. And I and I, I'm gonna you're gonna hear more about them because they gave me the story of they have a haunted house that that farmhouse that they were living in was extremely haunted. Um, and he actually got a scar on his head. He got cut by a plate that flew off of a table and 
cut his head open, dude. And he had him go to the hospital and getting five stitches. He goes, I look like freaking Frankenstein's monster <laughs> now. Um, but Thomas, thank you for sending me that. Him and his wife, nice people. Rebecca Mondragon, that's my stepdad's last name. He was a nice guy. He was a really good guy. I haven't seen him in years. I don't even know if he's still around, but he was always nice to me. He was a chef. He, she says, I was just wondering how the werewolf's wife didn't know he was a werewolf, or did she? No. That's the thing. According to him, she did not. All she knew was that he was a heathen that didn't like God. You know, that's, that's all she knew. Uh, Jason Broussard says, maybe the animal reaction depends on the phenomenon's intention. Hmm? But why one cat reacting like the, like the place in Montana and the other one not reacting? Yeah. You know, that's a weird thing. So, JoJo, it's frustrating at times, especially if they need help. Another thing, the guy Felix who gave me that story in Waco, you know, he was telling me, he says, dude, when he was beating that thing with the bat, you know, he said that when he was looking at the head, the head looked kind of like a cat, but it like the hair was poofed out everywhere. Hmm. But it looked kind of cat-like, but then the, the, the muzzle was too pointy. So he's like, it wasn't a cat. It had to have been, you know. But he said if, if you could take like a, a, a cat and mix it with like a werewolf, that's how it looked. You know, so just to give you that. Seven System says, what was the werewolf's cult's obsession with LSD? That's a good one. I'm going to answer that one on Tuesday. you got to tune in Tuesdays so you can hear the uh, interview with the vampire. Because I asked that question to Joel. Because I didn't ask it. I, there was so much to take in when, when I interviewed. And Nathan, the guy that, just, that I just told his uh, Bigfoot story, he told me. He says, my friend Brandy's got a crazy story, so I told her story. And then he says, dude, she, she knows some people. And he goes, you know, we know some people. Um, and then that's how we ended up getting in touch with them. And it was really Brandy's husband who was like saying, hey, tell him to, to talk to Nathaniel's friend. Because he just kind of in passing said, I have a friend that has an amazing story. I want to let him tell you. But he didn't get into what it was. He said it was a werewolf story. He didn't say the guy was a werewolf until I called him back. And I said, what's going on with that? And he says, yeah, well, I didn't want to say that because then you'll think I'm crazy. He goes, he tried to talk. He goes, I tried to tell another podcaster, YouTuber that I know, that I personally know. And I don't, I'm not going to say his name because he, he made fun of it. But in his defense, and I wouldn't say he's like my best friend or anything like that, but the guy, he wanted to interview him. And the guy was like, told him, but he's like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to interview. I don't want to come on and talk. Um... But in his defense, I mean, like, you know, it was, it sounds crazy mm -hmm. on the surface. Um, I don't know. Their obsession with LSD, though, in my opinion, it, you know, they have reasons. There was reasons yeah. for that. I think it opens gateways to communicate yeah. with certain things. But it, and... it goes even further. Like, it does, you know, there's certain things that they do. Rita Burnett, thank you for that donation. Oh, thank you we so much. We appreciate that. Like I said, we're trying to get some money together this month so we can buy some equipment, hiking shoes. I guess you got to have certain shoes to go out and do all this crap. Because I go out there on without the shoes, and it seems fine. Yeah. But I guess at some point, you know, um, you know, Got to call Helbin Holland and be like, what is the checklist here? And <laughs> Joe's like, well, first of all, dumbass, you need to get some good shoes. <laughs> and then Jesse's like, tell him to lose weight. And I'm like, what? Mind your business. Mind your business. No one's talking to you. you know, so, no. It says, Elastic Machinery says, a lot of witchcraft mentioned in the Bible is directly tied to druggery and control. Is it? <laughs> Charles' yeah, you remember ground the boots. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny because you remember that movie Mandy with the. Uh... I never saw it. Yeah, you watched it. Did I? Yeah, like. Uh, oh, it, was that with Nicolas Cage? Yeah, yeah, with, with Nicolas Cage. What um, was it about? Because I don't remember movies that well. Well, it was like his his wife got kidnapped by by what he thinks is like just this biker gang, um, but. Oh. Yeah, but the, the, yes. they're they're actually like this this gang. They are like a gang, but it's like it's like a biker gang uh, uh, who like they were humans at one point, but they just took they were obsessed like hyper obsessed with the LSD and and like the the fictional whatever the silly part is that like they they did so much drugs that their minds were so warped and they became like these kind mutants. of like, perfectly possessed like mutant creatures, but they still had their human form, but they're like superhuman mutants. Um, 
but th th they still operated like a like a criminal syndicate, like a criminal gang. It, so I don't know. It's just like the, that right there is another example of like art imitating life. You know, th this this group of people who come together and are like super obsessed with obtaining these mind altering substances f for like nefarious purposes, and you, you you don't know like what they really are. Yeah. Catherine says, who hasn't hit the like button? Exactly. Who hasn't hit that like button? Yeah, make sure y'all hit like. Hit that like button like Mike Tyson hopefully hits Jake Paul in the jaw. Uh, <laughs> Joanne Hartnett says, so I'm just putting this out there with the title of the upcoming show. It might be struck because of Anne Rice's book, Interview with the Vampire. Yeah, so that's why we're trying to figure out if it's interview with a vampire or interview with the vampire. Now, that is actually a Mandela effect. A lot of people say it's interview with the vampire, and some people say it's interview with a vampire. So it just depends. So what do we what do we uh, call it then? If we, if we don't want to get it struck, I mean, we got to be make sure that it's... Uh, I don't know. Interview with a heathen. <laughs> Interview with a Interview with a the, with the, with the guy who, drank, who used to drink blood. He doesn't drink blood anymore because he knows it's wrong. And his friend, who was a werewolf, actually saved him from an evil demonic cult. Can I interview with a banker? <laughs> Interview with the IRS. Interview with the with the politician. Interview with the tax man. Oh god, that's Nicodemus, wasn't it? Uh, so Nick, Nick, Nicholas Bravo, thank you. He says finally been working steady again for the camera fund. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. I am Michael the Fourth. Uh, can you talk about the light and dark that goes on, please? What does that mean? I, I don't I don't understand the the, the question. So thank you, Joanne, though, for pointing that out because it might be too close to that. So we, you know, you're right; it may get a strike. I hope not. Betsy Barnacle says hiking boots support your ankles. I know. I was told that's why I need them. Uh, see what happens. Uh, Jordan Cogburn, the vampire. Okay, Planet Four One Two, which is mad. He says werewolves in the sky with diamonds. Mm. <laughs> Uh, Ian Michael says, light and dark, angel and demon. Okay, you're still, be a little more specific, guy. Interview from a vampire. There we go. Old head tripping. And we're talking about, you know, vampires and tripping. So there you go. Old head tripping. He came up with an interview from a vampire. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll figure it out. So what's next? So we have, like I said, a bevy of stories, you know, on tap here, encounters. I don't like calling them stories because everybody has a story, right? And that's a good thing. But people say, well, you're just telling story. You're a storyteller. I go out and do real stuff. I do I judge the boots and I put them on the ground and I put the one foot from the other and I don't ever find anything. And you're just telling stories. Well, that's because people see things. And they're not always out there with boots on the ground looking for them. Most of the time when they put their boots on and they go looking for them, they don't find anything. And I'll say this. If you're planning on doing that, and I'm planning on doing it, this is what you need to do. Go to the areas between suburban, like Rod Nichols says, and the woods. Go into that in-between space because that's where people are seeing these things. For whatever reason, when they go tromping out way out in the middle of the woods, they don't find anything. No. Yeah. I'm going to talk about something, though, that happened, which is very odd. Today, my friend Barton Nunley was out in the, at the LBL, and he was doing a live stream from there. And his wife, Letitia, took a picture of a, of a footprint of a track. And she showed some of the other people on her team, and then they couldn't find it. It was off the phone. It was gone. Now, a lot of people will just say, oh, that's not anything supernatural. That just happens. Maybe Letitia made a mistake. Maybe she deleted it, blah, 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 blah. But like I said, and you can go to Daniel Jones's channel, The Vortex, if you want to see me standing up there talking um, from my first conference, uh, from our first conference, then you can see what I'm saying. I, I At one point, I believe, or, or I might have been, I was emceeing, so it might have been in between uh, uh, speakers, but I'm pretty sure it was when I was talking. There was a picture that I had, and along with several other researchers, uh, and one was a, a YouTuber too, and another was an author. And those pictures, there were two of them. They disappeared off of our computers and off of our phones. 
Now you tell me how that happens. And Jody Cook was one of them, and he was sitting right there. And when I said that, I said, Jody knows what I'm talking about. It's a really weird thing. It's a very strange thing. How does that happen? You tell me. Doesn't make sense. I still haven't figured it out, how they did it. They being who knows. You know. So that's there's that. Somebody said, how about vampire confessions? That's a good idea, Philip. Confessions of a vampire. Confessions of a vampire. There you go. You can go with that. Kind of rolls off the tongue. I think our vampire episode on the podcast is like our most viewed one. It's got like 55,000, 53, 55, Which vampire 000. one? Because there's several. Uh... What did I title it? Jim Bob says, Josh and Company have it's a the fantastic most channel. One. You have more insight than most. History is very important to understanding where we are going. Love you all. I love the free flow of ideas. We love you too, Jim Bob. And even though we don't always agree on religion and other things, I'm doing the best I can. I am not satanic like I was accused of by Goofy Dude, Goofy the Cable Guy. Um, I'm not going to say his name, but uh, yeah, he's going around telling everybody that I'm a, I'm a satanic because of my beliefs. No, it's not true. I have never even entertained that. And it's highly offensive to say that because God is the most important thing in my life and the true God, the one that I am looking for and have found, the Father of Christ. That's what I do, that's what I'm doing, and that's why I do what I say and say what I do. That's, that's my deal. I just wanna make sure that I'm worshiping the true God and not some Sumerian deity. Because this other guy is always like, oh, you know, I'm not, I'm not worshiping no Sumerian deity, blah, blah, blah. That's the whole point, dummy. I'm trying to make sure that we don't. That's, that's the point, if you haven't figured it out. Genius born every minute. But thank you for that, Jim Bob. We appreciate that. That's awesome. You're a good dude. Just sick of getting attacked. How about the vamp, the vamp rat? <laughs> Huh. That. The vamp rat, like what? So, because he's titling our. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it took me three, what what Anthony knows, what, four days to finally get the whole interview down because yeah. I kept having to stop because of people trying to, you know, run amok and commit anarchy. Uh, yes, Planet 412, you can, Wolf, he says, you cannot make everyone happy. No, you can't. I'm, I've tried to be as nice to, as I can and. Matt, you know better than anybody who we're talking about. It's just you can't. These people, they're not going to stop. And why would you want war so much? I mean, what in the hell? You can't accomplish crap when it's, when it's constant warfare. <laughs> Midi A says, Wolf, your hand looks like Thanos with the Infinity Gun. <laughs> Which one? I don't know. You got to start wearing gemstone rings. Just make your own gauntlet. <laughs> Kez Marquez, can I, can, I, can I believe in aliens and the supernatural and still be a Christian? Absolutely. Why not? Uh, my good friend, Barton Nunley, who has said many times, he, he's a perfect example of a good dude that doesn't judge you. Like, he doesn't believe exactly like I do, <clears throat> and he still is my friend. Ken Gerhardt and I don't agree on Bigfoot. And he doesn't stop supporting me and being my friend. I can call him up anytime, you know, and just speak to him and say, hey, Ken, what's going on? So, Barton, same thing. But I think all of us are going to have to take a lesson from this last round of crap from this ridiculous person and top, take a look and pull back because I think people got too familiar with us. And I think that's the problem. When you let people get too familiar, like my brother, he gave me a little pep talk today. He's good for that. He never liked this particular individual, and he warned me. And he said, dude, familiarity breeds you know, contempt. He's like, they became resentful after the peace. And he told me, don't be surprised when they turn on you. And that's what happened. And all it took was a spark. A little bitty sting that shouldn't have even been anything. A spark is all it took. And there was a, a combusted, you know, whatever. 
And then it was like, oh, well, you know, you gave them this and gave them that, but you treat us bad or whatever. I didn't treat you bad. I asked you to stop doing certain things, and these people didn't want to. They wanted to continue this, this war. It's over. Let it go. Who cares what these people say anymore? But this other guy, he's on a witch hunt. He wants to, you know, make little comments like, you know, you know you're a witch, and you're a this, and you're a that. And then just, just be quiet, dude. No, I'm not. Caitlin McLeod says, Josh, how about the books, uh, The Life Vampire Confessions? <laughs> So Liberty says the werewolf was able to step away and quit. Can a vampire? Yes. And that was, he didn't just step away and quit. One of the things that they didn't, they didn't tell you, you know, he learned this from this guy that was talking about it. Go listen to the interview again. Um, it was basically like, you know, he was like blabbing how stay away from the anointed, which is certain people, you know, that, that are strong in their faith. And uh, they, they couldn't touch them. They couldn't hurt them. They couldn't do anything to him. They could, you know, he said you could physically, you know, beat these people up if you wanted to. He's yeah. like, but because you had that other, the other, that thing that was attached to them, that's what was repel repulsed by the anointed. That's what was repulsed by God and religious artifacts. So that right there, um, yes, Eddie. He was delivered from, from evil by God because that was the, the other. He said it gives you all this strength and all this power and this clarity at certain times. He's like, and you're able to, to think faster and move quicker and do all these amazing things. He goes, but when it came to like the power of Christ, it was like they, they were impotent. They could do nothing. He's like, so he goes, it was, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the payoff. He goes, I always thought it was just a trade-off. He goes, but the trade-off wasn't worth it. He's like, because, you know, you, you go to get after somebody who's really strong in the faith. You can't do anything to him. He's like, you can do nothing. You're helpless, <laughs> you know. And, and But so it should be because you're not, you shouldn't be able to mess with God's people, you know. The Christians who serve God, who serve Christ, that are on the right path, you know. But if you're not and you don't believe like that, that doesn't mean that I'm going to single you out or attack you like some people want me to. And they're going after me because I won't, because they say, oh, you let these heathens in your chat, blah, 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 blah. So what am I supposed to do? Go on a witch hunt and find everybody who doesn't believe like me and attack them? No, that's what you do. Everybody is entitled to their own opinion. Do I believe that they're on the right path? No, I don't. But we pray for them. We don't attack them. Ian Mago says, I was met uh, in why an angel the, the night I thought I was going to take my life. That's an interesting thing. Get in touch with me. Maybe you can tell me your story. Interview with a sucker. <laughs> Come off as super rude. Condescending with a double meaning. I think so. <laughs> I think so. Um, Michael says, we love you, Josh. You know, I love you guys too. And it's a shame that just a couple people can do so much damage and then make it to where we may not even have a conference. Hmm. Jim Bob, you're absolutely right. He says, I can't stand the enjoyment of death in society. We should love life and find life, express life. That's, that's, that, is a, that is a thing. What is this death worship? Like, it, there's two things going on in this world. And it really in this country in particular, there's like this cult of ignorance. It's like being ignorant and you're, 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 you're like, that's cool or something. You know, and then the, I'm minding my own business. No, you're just being a fence-sitting coward is what you're doing. Two types of people in hell that are that I will not pity is a coward and and uh, a traitor. Special place in hell for those people. You don't stand up and take a stand. I sat here right here and I will tell you, I will give my life for my beliefs. It's as simple as that. And I would put my life down for any any child in danger or a woman. And I'm not going to say I won't do it for a man because I don't know. But, I mean, if a, if a person is hitting a woman or attacking a woman, I'm not a white knight. I'm not. Is this, this might sound kind of, you know, snotty thing to say. But my friend used to say Captain Savo. That's not a really a good. <laughs> but I'm not, you know, and, but I'm not going to. I'm not a person that gets out of people's business when it comes to that. But I was in the parking lot one time at the HGB and I saw this dude punching the, a girl through a window. And I. I ran over there without even a second thought. I did something. I grabbed the dude and slammed him, and I could have gotten in trouble because he got hurt. 
but there were witnesses and she was like hurt and she luckily she came back around in her in her bronco and she came back around and i think it's funny because a bronco that's what oj was <laughs> running off in you know but she came back around and she sat there for the cops because this dude who who really wasn't that big of a dude i mean he was just a skinny dude but you know it wasn't like i picked up some big power lifter but i grabbed him and i just slammed him and i hurt him he went unconscious and he hit the back of his head <clears throat> poor little baby and so i almost got arrested for it but uh if you were to see someone being abused a woman or a child i mean like two guys fighting you don't know i mean the guy yeah. like, let him work it out you know but if there's five or six guys beating up one guy, even that I learned a lesson about one time um, because I jumped in to try to stop these guys from beating this dude. And I, knew, I didn't know the situation. And then when it was made clear to me why they were beating him up, um, he had just assaulted someone, you know, in a bad way. Um, like he had assaulted a woman. And so they were beating him up. And I thought they were just going to kill this guy. But I was a young man and I thought I was doing the right thing. And they stopped me after I got punched a few times. And we kind of, they stopped and were focused on me. One of them said, This guy did this, this, and that. And another one came up and said, Look, dude, he goes, We called the police. All right. And so I sat there going, like, Okay, I didn't know what was going on. So, you know, I'm not telling you to run out and, and risk yourself and get in people's business because you learn your lesson, you know. But, if I see someone hurting someone, like a woman or a child, you know, it's it's like you, well, people will sit there and they will video this. Oh, there yeah. was a video of a woman getting hit on a, on a bus. And this cult of ignorance is so worshipped. And then the death, like Jim Bob said, what is it with these people and the death? Faces of death, you know, <clears throat> death this and death that, and all these people dying and gratuitous death. Oh, yeah. Everywhere is death, death, death. You know, it's like... What the hell is that? What's going on with that? It's like they're obsessed. They're, people find, it's ironic, people are afraid of physical death, but, but also are like entertained by it and glorify it. When like there are certain, there are certain like meanings or types of death that are like a, a good, like productive thing, like... <laughs> Like when Paul, uh, the Apostle Paul says, I die daily, you know, in me there is no good thing, I, I die daily. That, that, that means like, it means like dying to the will of the flesh, you know, it's a certain, it's a certain type of death. It means like you, you die to, to the will or the enslavement of all of your like earthly and fleshly proclivities. Because if you follow the, if you, you follow the flesh and it will lead you astray, you know, the more you are in the flesh, the, the, Less you are in the spirit, and therefore the further dis disconnected you become from God. Um, so, like, th th I believe there are certain meanings of death. Is what I'm getting at that are that are a good thing. That make certain types of death a good thing. Uh, um, but the modern world is not really like they don't glorify that type of death. Like the Orthodox Church, um, th there's a certain group within the Orthodox Church that. Uh, that says uh, they have like this saying or motto. It's, it sounds edgy, but it, but it's it's actually not. They say, it, they say death to the world. It doesn't mean like the world should everyone in the world should die. No, it means like it means that on a personal level you die to the will of this world. It, it means like your 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 will or. Um, your spirit is so disconnected from the modern world and from the from the flesh from the from the material world that you might as well be dead to it. Yeah. That's what it means, like death to the world. But th <clears throat> that 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 type of death, it's like it requires effort. It, it it results in 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 something good happening. But that type that type of death is not like glorified. It's not entertaining, you know. So yeah. So, what's next? What do you want to hear? Thank you, Kate. Oh, thank Hunter. you, Kate. All the all the big donators coming out today to help out. We appreciate that. Thank you so much. Everybody's been so great, generous today. So we really got to get this stuff going. So I didn't want to have to ask, but I had a talk with another YouTuber um, who told me. He says, "Don't be afraid to ask your listeners." He goes, "You never ask them for anything." When people say we beg for money, that's a lie. That is an absolute yeah. lie. We've never come up here and begged for anything. I just say that because our listeners are very generous. Yeah. 
you know, they, the, people say all kinds jealousy. of things. They say all kinds of things. It's just they just they just make stuff up. They say that I sit here and I flex. I'm not flexing. Once or twice I showed my arms, and then they're like, "Oh yeah, I sit you up there and flex you like Popeye." You know, <laughs> it's like whatever, dude. Shut up. I get a kick out of it though. I I got a funny email. Um, somebody just going off on me, you know, and it was like this whole big thing about what, how, how come my channel is dying and everyone hates me. <laughs> I'm mm -hmm. sitting there listening after the third paragraph. I was like, why am I even reading this? And I realized I was reading this crap. And so I just like delete whatever, um, because no, it's not. And no, they don't. So that's why, because that, okay. Jennifer says your true fans know what's up. Yes, that's true. They do. Uh, Valerie Geist says, what would it look like if you took a former werewolf dog man hunting? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Interesting, though. So here's what I got to tell you. Here's a, here's a story for you right here. I, and I don't know if you want to hear this. I mean, I got, I got a couple more in the chamber. I got a dog man one. I see Scorpion in the chat. Me and him talked about this one just the other day. Scorpion, um, since you're in the chat, have you had a chance to talk to Queen Boudicca about her fight with the cannibals? Let's just see what he says. I haven't talked to him in a couple days. Not yet. Well, if you see her, though, be sure and do that because we do want to get that interview. And that's another reason why we need the camera so we can take it and talk to these people. Joanne says, Josh, look at what you talked about the other day. Our society is so bombarded with music, movies, and news, internet, dark side of evil, people that think it's fake and funny and innocent. No, yeah, exactly. You know, it's ridiculous. Now, if you tuned in on Friday, you would have seen, we had a little round table. Matt Imsch was there, who's in the chat, Planet 412, great guy, one of my good friends here. Um, we, we He was on the show along with uh, uh, Yohola Tiger. Now, Yohola Tiger is a Cherokee. Uh, he's a, he's a true Native American, and he's got a little bit of Kiowa in him too. And he's from uh, Oklahoma, and um, he does a lot of investigating, and he does a lot of storytelling on his show, War Cry Podcast. Now, he was on with us along with Rai Voss from Codega's. Uh, what is Codex it? Codex of Curiosities. Co Co yeah, Codex of Cur. What is it? Codex of Curiosities. Codex of Curiosities. Rai, Rai Voss, great guy, nice guy. Another guy. I'm going to start having him and Matt come on and 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 maybe co-host with me some on Fridays, just like Chris James. Strange things with Chris James. He comes on on Saturdays. We've been knocking it out of the park, and we love it. The people we you don't get as big of an audience on Saturday because we're talking about the alien agenda. Because people think that it's just about space aliens or some crap. That's not. We get into all kinds of stuff. Um, but if you go and you check out those nights, in particular on, on uh, Saturday, we are getting really, really good feedback from the people who are showing up. People are showing up and they're saying, Philip uh, uh, says, uh, Chris James is awesome. Philip Barnes. Philip Barnes was at my conference. He's an awesome guy, too. So shout out to you, Philip. So what happens is they, they, um, People are telling us, hey, we really enjoyed the Saturday conversation. And I get like bunches of messages. Just, I don't know why I picked up the phone. Like you can see it, but I get bunches of messages and emails about how much the people that do watch the Saturdays are enjoying it. And I am personally really enjoying the Saturdays. I love the Sundays too because I get to sit here and just talk away. Um, but I love Fridays too. Even though Fridays we were thinking about cutting it out, we decided to cut out the pre recorded interviews. But we are still going to do pre-recorded interviews because I'm getting bombarded, uh, as that word is being used. I'm getting bombarded by my fellow podcasters and YouTubers to come on and me interview them. And not just to interview them, but to also do uh, a, like a, a lot of, uh, what do you call it, um, interactive, like uh, – it, like where, where we, we go back and forth, like do a round table together. Yeah. So that's something that we are going to start doing more of. We're going to do that. And so uh, we're, we're, we got what? Hellbent Holler, who's supposed to come on, and we're going we're gonna to record with them. Um, we're going to record with Chris James and talk about his stuff. He used to be a Border Patrol agent. He's a really interesting guy. You got to check it out. And, I, and I've been having some really cool people. Michael Anthony, who everybody loved, who was on the show Saturday. Um, really good time. We are just, it's awesome. But Yohola Tiger, we were talking about the, the, and it came up because Matt is actually Lebanese. 
And so it came up about the Falak, or I brought it up, but behold, the tiger was talking about this water spirit or entity that was drowning people. It was killing. Go back and watch the Friday live stream. It was drowning people up there in Oklahoma. It was uh, uh, taking people's life um, because people were drowning in this particular uh, river. Wasn't it right, Matt Anthony? Yeah. And uh, and so, yeah, so we talked about the Falak, which is this uh, Arabic version of this, uh, which to me is like Yomungandr. And it's really weird because these beings that we talk about, um, they are called subnature. Now, I don't know if you know what that is. If you don't know what that is, that is a term that people use to describe these entities, like you, what you would call like gnomes, goblins, you know, things like that. Um, there's different t- terms for them, you know. Um, people call them like sylphs and the fewth and b- different things, you know. There's all these different terms. Um, but they are considered to be sort of in what, what that means by subnature is they're part of nature, but they're sort of on their own little level. And the creature of Jormungandr, the world serpent, and the Norse mythology is very similar to the Falak, as the earth sits on top of different layers. And these creatures hold the earth, they're, they're below the earth. Jormungandr is very much the same thing. It's the world serpent. And if it were ever be unleashed, just like Falak, it would destroy and devour everything and kill everybody. Um, and then we talked a little bit about uh, Ragnarok and what happens, and it's pretty unsavory end for everybody. But in a way, whether you believe it's spiritual or physical, that is what's going to happen, isn't it? The worst parts of Revelations, boom, you know, we're in the Kali Yuga. It's the truth. It's just it's going to happen. Um, <clears throat> Planet 412 says fairies. Yeah, that's that's another one. Uh, Valerie says, Josh, could that be Leviathan? Yes, very much so, except... Uh, and Matt says it on the show on Friday. He has the name. It's called the Mahmoud. Mahmoud or Ma, 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 Ma. Matt could probably tell you. Matt, uh, you you talked about the name of the giant fish that the Falak lives underneath. Oh, I think it was called the Mahmoud. The Mahmoud. Okay, that giant fish is actually what the, the equivalent of the Chinese turtle. It's holding up the Earth, which in a way it is because those are the masters of different levels, the subterranean levels, which are also thought of by different religions and cultures as levels of hell, because everything below the Earth is called hell. Doesn't necessarily mean that it's a fiery place of torment, although that place is supposedly at the center of it all, right? Go read the book, The Smoky God, too, if you want to hear more about the inner earth, and it'll teach you a little something, you know. Um, the other book I, I suggested everybody to read was, um, um, it's Aphrodite spelled backwards. I forgot the name of it. Edadorpa. Edadorpa. Go check it out. Go read it. It'll give you some insight. Isn't that called I Am the Man? I Am the Man, yes. I've spent years reading these books, but apparently I'm an ignorant, stupid poopukaka head. Because I don't want to uh, change my religion to fanaticism. Ah. But here's what I'll tell you. When we talk about the inner earth, and this is the reason why I brought this up, it's because I believe that there is something to it. And this is another story. When, When we talked about the Hernandez Ranch years ago, and I interviewed these gentlemen, and Anthony knows them. I know them. They're they're just good country people that had some stuff happen to them. They're not nothing magical, really, to them. They're just down-home Texas people who wanted to live their lives in peace. But that couldn't happen because their, their land was plagued by these beasts. But this is it all started back in the 1870s because they covered up a hole. Right? That's what happened. They mm-hmm. covered up a hole, and these things— got pissed. Well, there's a reason for that. They live there, and I believe that. I really believe that they come from within the earth. When we talk about the beasts of the earth, the Bible, I know everybody's always talking about the Bible. It's one of many books that talks about the beasts of the earth. It's not only talking about those that roam upon the earth. I'm talking about the earth that live within the earth. Those will be judged upon and within the earth, right? Go to the book of Job. Where have thou been? I've been walking to and fro upon and within the earth. I think that there's something there. There's something below our feet. Barton has said, and Barton Nunley, a good friend of ours, another show, 
He said, if you could look down and see what was below your feet, it would scare you to death. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of real estate. Yep. So this particular story, speaking of Montana, this happened in Montana too, in the northeastern corner of Montana. Um, or maybe it's the northwestern corner. It, it doesn't matter. It's not important. But anyway, this person, he got in touch with me. And he says, I got to tell you a story. And actually, he didn't get in touch with me. Somebody told me about him, and I got in touch with him. So let's put it that way. He says, but I, he goes, yeah, I got a story. I got to tell you. He says, my family worked cattle for years and years. He said, our ranch was established in 1899. And he said, for years and years. He goes, we heard stories of these bear-like creatures, bear-like. He goes, but I never saw one. He goes, and then I was 27 years old. He's like, and I was riding on my horse one day, just, just for a ride. And he goes, my horse's name is Spirit. It's a pretty horse. And I've seen a picture of it. And it's, a, it's a beautiful animal. Cool name, too. He said, I was 27. He says, I'm 47 now. I'm sorry, I said, I'm 42 now. He's like, he's riding along the fence line. He says, and I look and I see all the cows. They're all just kind of bunched up in one corner. And he's like, and they're mooing and acting weird. He says, so I just took off that way to go see what, what was up. Usually when something like that happens, well, you can take a guess. Something spooked him, possibly a predator. And he has, he always said he always had his nice 308 rifle right there ready to go. He's like, and I always had a big old 45 just in case, and even a smaller gun for snakes. But he was like, dude, I'm riding along. He's like, and I see in this one clump of trees about 50 yards out, this thing come up out of this hole. He goes, and it looked almost like a giant spider. And he's like, and I'm like, what in the hell am I looking at? And he goes, and I come prepared. He goes, I had a pair of binoculars. And I had him on my, you know, he goes, I like to, like to bird watch. He said, I've been doing it for years. I love to, to look for cardinals and blue jays and snap photos of them. He says, so I look and I saw. And he goes, this thing looked weird. It was like four or five different limbs of something coming up out of this hole. A hole that he had never even seen before. And he's like, I've never even seen this before on my property. He goes, but our property was 200 acres. He goes, and I thought I knew every inch of it. But, you know, there were certain parts I never went to, hardly ever. He said, in this little corner of the area, they called it Dogwood. Now, he thought it was a weird name, and he had no reason why it was called that. He just it was always called that. His great-grandfather called it that. So he rides his horse over there, starts to gallop, but the horse gets about halfway, and it starts to balk. Spirit doesn't want anything to do with it. So James, gets off, this is the guy's name, gets off the horse, takes his rifle, he starts to head over there where the hole is at. And he goes, and God be with me. His exact words. He says, I see. This is no spider. I don't know what it is. He's like, it's crawling around. It's flipping around. And he goes, it stands up on its hind legs. And get this, folks. This is very, very weird. He said, the upper body spun around. Like, the, the, like it spun around and it was standing upright. Then he goes, and there was another one coming up out of there. Same thing. It was like these weird, like, limbs. It was like it was, they were folded and coming out all weird. He's like, and then it came out, boom, four limbs moving around like a spider. Uh. And then the head popped up, and then it was the arms and everything was like, and he could hear pop, 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 pop. And we know about this because we've heard of Dogman making that popping noise. Now, mm -hmm. I didn't have that when I had my encounter, but it does happen. Whenever he saw this, he's like backing up, backing up. And you want to talk about a loyal horse. His horse was rearing up, but it didn't leave him. He said, I had had this horse since it was a foal. It wasn't going to take off. He's like, but I was like, oh, man. He said, at that point in time, he called me Wolf. I see, he first called me Mr. Turner. And I always say, call me Wolf. Some people say, okay, and some people call me Josh. I don't care. Call me whatever you want. Just don't call me to eat potato salad. <laughs> and he said, at this point, Wolf, he goes, I, I look at these creatures. He's like, and the second one was like adjusting its head. Like, like it was, you know, and I'm going like, what am I looking at here? What could this possibly be? He goes, at that point in time, 
Everything I had ever been told about these things being out there came true. I didn't believe it. He's like, I had no clue that these things existed. He goes, and even my younger brother saw one one time when he was riding around on the ATV, hanging from a tree, and they just jumped down. Didn't do anything, just stood there. And he's like, when, when he told me that, I, thought, I told my brother, I said, you're crazy, Mike. That's ridiculous. I think that's stupid. He's like, this, this is stupid stories that we were told as kids so that we wouldn't be out late. But our mother was a worry wart. Unfortunately, his mother passed away when he was 19 of breast cancer. And that's sad. That's why I'm very, just, cancer sucks. But he said, he's like, I'm looking at these things. Two creatures that look like they're from, this is his words, Van Helsing. He's like, they're werewolves. They're freaking werewolves right in front of me. I don't know what the freaking heck is going on. So he goes, and I'm backing up, backing up. I got my rifle. He goes, and they're just looking at me. He goes, and then they're moving. They're kind of swaying back and forth. And then he goes, they're, they're, they looked thin at one point. He goes, but then they do this little weird arch thing in their back, and they pop out like, boom. He's like, and then I'm looking at the hole, and I'm, I'm thinking, that hole... He said, it ain't even like two foot around. It don't even look like it's big enough for these seven and a half, eight foot tall, whatever creatures to come out of it. He's like, how on God's beautiful green earth, my words, not his, but he said on God's green earth. He said, how is it that these things are coming up out of a hole? And I told him, I said, this isn't the first time we've heard of this. We've heard of things like this. We've been told stories like this, that these things do that. They actually do come out of the ground. Now, is this, this is the question, and I'm going to pose this to the, to the audience and to Anthony that's sitting right here. Is this the same thing as Gerald the werewolf? Are these the same things? Or is this something primordial, something that goes way back in our history? Are, are these the, the progenitors of what we know of as werewolves? Hmm. Or... Is it like the late J.C. Johnson said? These things, these beings, what they do is they practice black magic, and then they go out into the wilderness, and they become werewolves, and guess what? They get stuck. There, to me, has to be some sort of race of beings that look like this, that maybe they come from the inner earth. Something is going to be told to you on Tuesday that you're going to be, it's going to be really weird. And this is probably going to be a two or three hour episode. I'm going to tell the first hour tonight. I'm going to record it for your listening pleasure for Tuesday. Very odd, very weird things that were told to me by someone who practiced vampirism. I knew the questions to ask this guy that I didn't really get to ask the first guy. So I went back and I asked the first guy, Gerald, a couple questions. And one of them was, what is your opinion on the inner earth? I said, are there werewolves within the earth? He says, I know that you guys like to talk about this dog man creature. His opinion, not necessarily mine, and people that come on the show and tell their story, or people that I interview, or the, the audience. You're all welcome to believe something completely different. Morgan, thank you for sending that. I'll look at your story when I get home. Thank you. Here's, here's the thing. He said, this is what he said. He goes, I don't believe in dog men. I've never seen one. He's like, I've seen werewolves because that I practiced werewolfism. You know, where, well, I said that, but he practiced, you know, black magic. He said, I've seen creatures, though. And Joel, he's like, you can get to ask him. He's seen even more because he was higher up. He goes, things that you would think were just in the realm of fantasy. So he asked me a question. He says, let me ask you a question, Mr. Turner. He kept calling me that. He said, do you like science fiction? And I was like, well, I hadn't really thought about it. You know, but yeah, I guess. I was like, I like Dune, Star Wars, you know. He's like, do you like fantasy? 
I said, yeah, I like uh, Lord of the Rings. He said, take the weirdest, and he said, poop, you know, the bad word. Mm -hmm. He said, take the weirdest from those realms and put it together. That exists. And not necessarily just in our realm, but they can come. They can come in and out of our realm. And he says, do you believe me? And I said, yes, I, I do. Actually, I do. Because on our show, one of the things that made us popular and one of the reasons why we have 679 people in this chat right now, one of the reasons why we just hit 33,000 is because we do it all. And we talk about it all because it all fits. Somehow, some way, this is all connected. And if you're skipping certain nights because of whatever, check it out. And if you don't agree, you don't agree. But at least give us a chance because we're trying to come up with solutions, answers, and whatever. When I first started this back in 2019 with Anthony and Tony and Armando, the God rest his soul, we were told, you need to find, a, 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 pick a lane, stay in it. They told us that, right? Yep. They said, do dogman and be a dogman guy. Why do you keep veering your car off into these other lanes? Stay out of my lane. I do this. You do that. And I said, no, I can't do that. Because the truth is over there, and my vehicle needs to go over there, and you're just in the way. So, either get your piece of junk off the road, or you can go with me. But you're not going to stand in front of me. So that was my answer to those people. We need to look for all of the solutions and quit throwing people off, throwing people out, because people think it's too hard to believe. We are literally living in a time where people are seeing aliens at a mall. Now, whether that happened or not, it's being talked about. And we talked about it on a Saturday show with Christopher Jordan from Curious Realm. He's a very no-nonsense guy, very science-minded guy, very smart, one of the smartest people in this field. Hmm. You can learn something from people. Ryan Edwards cryptozoologist, one of the, one of the good upcoming, up and coming guys. He's only 21, 22 years old. He's a kid. I learned from him. Every time I talk to the guy, I learn something. He's a genius. He's a smart kid. You have to take it all in. Stop being so arrogant. Stop being so close minded. Stop worrying about whose eyebrows look satanic and all this other goofy crap that doesn't matter. Get rid of this cult of ignorance and stop worshiping death. And do what Jim Bob said and look for life. As Carl Sagan, who was, a, was an atheist, I don't agree the way he believed, but like Carl Sagan said, look for life as we know it. No, look for life as we can't even understand it. Very important. Very important. And I believe there are people in this community who are disinformation agents who are trying to throw us off and they are working overtime. And they have told people, and I intercepted some of their texts, and it was ridiculous, it was awful, the things they said about me. But I don't give a crap what you say about me because it's not going to stop me. And they said, we have to get rid of this guy. Well, why is that? Especially coming from somebody who just kind of came out of nowhere. Why is that? Because I'm saying things that are, what, too uncomfortable? So I asked this guy, Gerald, I said, what? And this, this goes with what James, this guy, James the Rancher, we're talking about here. He said, I do believe that there could be a race of werewolves that live within the earth. But he goes, but they're not like us. He's talking about him and his people. He goes, I don't know what they are. He's like, but I watched with my own eyes from the black water, the dark water, as they called it. He said, these two beings come up out of this water, covered in this black water, shaking it off, that I thought, what is this? He said, and they look like a cross between bears and what we were. 
He's like, and then they walked across the water like they like they were magic beings. Like he goes, something I couldn't do. And he goes, I didn't question it. Yes, Morgan the Black Goo. He's like, I didn't question it because it wasn't, it was above my pay grade, as he said. I watched them. He said, another time I was at one of the temples. They called it the Temple of Shea. I don't know what that means. That's just what they called it. But he said that this temple, he said he walked across the, 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 the room, or this being came in and walked across the room. He was robed. He said it took off its robe and it looked like a giant reptile gargoyle looking thing. And now I will say, Gerald, he goes, I'm not the most red person. He goes, I was a grunt. I did my jobs. That was it. He's like, my job was not to go and fight and then ask questions. Mm -hmm. He said, my job was just to go and fight. He goes, I don't know what the hell that S-H-I-T was. When I told him what it's called, I said, that's called a Draco reptilian. He goes, well, Mr. Turner, you know more than I do about it. He goes, I just knew it was there at the temple. And it was talking to these two weird looking beings. And he goes, there was all kinds of weird phenomena going on. And I didn't ask questions because it wasn't my job. So back to our, our man, James here. He's getting back on his horse. After witnessing these two beings that he originally thought were giant spiders that crawled up out of a hole that wasn't even two foot in diameter. And these things, he said, looked like they were about 700 pounds, and they were probably eight foot tall. Solid muscle, huge. We've heard this before. Big, huge, bulky upper body, like a weightlifter, like a powerlifter with giant thighs. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing I asked Gerald. I was like, what do they look like? The, the different types of werewolves, do they have different ones? He said, oh, yeah, there's different ones. He goes, just like there's different people. They all look the different. They're not, they're not, that none of us look the same. He said, when you see the ones that look exactly like each other, he goes, those are like some sort of clone. He goes, and they come from some, some sort of facility or somewhere. Wow. We just hit 709 people. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, Elastic Machine says there's many reptilian experiences on military bases. Absolutely. Absolutely. He's like, but these things, they're, they're like a type of clone. He's like, at least that's what I think they are, because I don't know. So when I talk to our vampire guy, Joel, Joel says, I'm going to give you the 411. So it was a long interview, almost five hours I talked to this guy over the course of, four, what, four days? Was it yeah. four, four days? Mm -hmm. In the middle of trying to do my taxes and trying to do everything else and trying to quell a rebellion and bring these people to heal and stop the madness. Because peace is so much easier to get things done, right? It's so much easier. Trying to talk to these people and get the 411 on what the hell is going on. So James gets on his horse, and he's like, and I'm backing up, backing up. He's like, and these things, they just make a beeline for the cattle. They don't even care about me. Some more meat. Yep. And he said at that point in time, he's like, dude, I thought they were going to just destroy part of that herd right there. He's like, and I took out my weapon, and I fired it as many times as I could into these things. And guess what happened? Not much. The, the black smoke came off of them. No, no, no. You'd be real shocked. Oh. Yes. One of them, blood spray came off of it, but didn't, did not stop it. It was like a flinch, and it kept going. Another one, though, the, the, the second one that was right behind it, he caught it right behind the neck, and it dropped. Did he say what caliber he had? Three oh eight. Okay. He said, when it dropped, I just kept firing at the other one. He's like, and I managed to hit it two or three times along its side. And eventually it stopped and it got, it, I got its attention. It looked at its friend. It looked at me. He goes, and then it came toward me. At that point, I got my horse and I turned and this horse could fly like the wind. He goes, and we were gone. And this thing stopped about halfway between me and the cattle and then decided to go back. And it ran over to its friend. 
He goes, and I turned and I observed. He goes, and I watched as something crazy happened. That thing that I shot dead sat up, shook its head like it had been rocked. And then they both just slowly walked on, hind, on their hind legs, got back on all fours and ran back into that hole and squished themselves up and they were back down in it. He's like, I went and got my father. And my, my uncle was there too. He says, and we went back out there with weapons. We were armed. He goes, we were ready. He said, and my uncle, he's got an armory. He's like, he was ready to go. He had seen these things before. And so had his little brother. This guy telling the story. His uncle and his little brother had all seen them. His dad had heard the stories for years. His grandfather, it was dad's dad, so was still alive. He had seen them too. He always just called them devils. He said, they'll come up out of a hole, snatch a cow, kill it, eat it, and then they go back. He's like, but as long as you don't, and get this, you don't hurt them or shoot them or mess with them, they won't decimate your herd. They'll just take one every now and then. And he thought, oh, my gosh, maybe I screwed up. He's like, maybe, maybe I should have just let them take one. And this is what I said. I need jerk reacted. And sometimes I do this. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, 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 James, no. Because maybe that's a form of, of I said offering. that is gifting them. That is yeah. supplication. That is allowing them to take something that is not theirs. I said, you knew, you know now you can hurt them. I said, I've heard stories of them being pretty much, and Anthony, you know this. What happens when they get shot? Tell the audience. Usually when, they, usually when these things get shot, the people who shoot them, they say that they see the bullet connect, but it, it doesn't do anything except, like, they'll see, like, this black, it's like a mist or, like, a smoke, some kind of, like, black substance kind of, like, pop off of them, like, 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 like they're made of dust or something. It's, mm -hmm. it's the weirdest thing. And multiple people who have had the experience of shooting a firearm at these things, and they see the impact, it, they, see, they say the same thing. It's like this black sand or something. I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. And I know for a fact that there are a couple of other people in this field who have fielded these reports, and they reach out to me. And I say just one of them really is, just did not. And they gave me the story. They didn't even want to take it. They didn't want to because it didn't fit the narrative that they want to present to the audience. And I told this guy, I said, are you serious? He's like, have you ever heard of this? And, and of course, we said, yeah, we've heard of this. And he's like, yeah, but that's, you know, my audience ain't going to. So how do you know unless you tell them? So there, there again, it's the cult of ignorance mm -hmm. that we are all following blindly because why? Views, you won't get the views or people will think you're crazy. Or maybe they'll call you a heretic or whatever the hell they can think of. But until somebody stands up and says, this is what is going on, and I'm going to tell the whole enchilada. This is the real McCoy. This is what's really happening. Instead of these painted stories where they omit things or add little something or another to make it more, you know, flavorful, whatever the hell they do. These organizations... There's one, the Bigfoot community, there's one with the ghost community, there's one with the, with the alien community. They all do it. They censor each other, like academia. And to all of those organizations, I am definitely an apostate. I'm a heretic. Because I'm telling you what's really going on, at least what I'm being told. And some of these people who have given me their stories, they tried to give them to other people, but they don't want them. Because they're just stories, right? But when someone tells you a story and one person says it, you're like, wow, that's weird. Like Lyle Blackburn says, you put it in a one-off file. But then two people tell you. Then three people. Then four people, five people. Next thing you know, you have a dozen people telling you the same thing. Something is going on. Where there's smoke, right? Fire. Fire. So I'm going to tell you right now what I believe is going on. I believe that there are creatures that live beneath our feet. 
They come up out of the ground and they do what they do. So our friends, you know, that we're talking about, and I say our friends, I haven't met him in person and I don't know his family. He seemed like a pleasant guy. No nonsense guy. He says, we go back out there and guess what we did? We threw dynamite down in that hole. Next day we went and we covered it up. Since then, there, has been any, there hasn't been any other, uh, you know, incidents. He said, now I'm 42 years old, nothing else has happened. He goes, but I'm watching and I'm waiting, believe me. And I'll say this, just because nothing has happened doesn't mean it won't happen. And he's fortunate because we've heard stories of other people like with Hernandez Ranch. That started an entire war with these creatures, which led to their whole family losing all of their cattle on three different properties. That went back to the 1870s. These cowboys out there were fighting for their lives. It's become a local myth or legend, whatever, but nobody really knows the whole truth, do they? Ian Michael says, Claudia Ackley knew what was going on. I believe she did. That's why she's in my book, The Bigfoot Phenomena. Go check it out. It's on Amazon. Also, Werewolves and the Dogman Phenomena, and I'm in the process of doing the, the vampire book. So somebody messaged me the other day, and they were really snarky, and this person, I'll call her N. N says this to me in an email. She says, how come other people aren't talking about vampires as much as you are? I said, I don't know. Maybe they're dumb. That was my simple answer. I don't know what to tell you. I said, mainly... This is the truth, what I really said. I didn't say that. That was, just, that was me being stupid. The truth, I told her, I said, this is what I think. When we first started this, we didn't have very many vampire stories at all. But once we told some, and we called them vampires, because the people that told us these stories, right, Anthony, they didn't say they were vampires. No. They said they saw something that looks like this. And so we said, that's a vampire. If it looks like a duck, quacks like a duck, well, guess what? It's probably my high school mascot. I will say this. Enough people tell you, like I said, you have to stand up and look at the freaking, where this is, t the evidence is taking you. It's taking you somewhere. And when I say evidence, I use that term loosely because a lot of people say, well, that's not evidence. That's just people saying this and that, blah, 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 blah. For me, it is. Because you have enough people that are coming forward and talking about some flying humanoid that is drinking blood. So we started calling it a vampire. It ain't our fault that other people didn't call it that. Call it what it is. If it's participating in the, you know, exsanguination of an animal or man, whatever, to me, that's a vampire. A chupacabra. The real one, not the blue dog. That's what it does. It's a vampiric type entity. Go to the key of Solomon. Read it. Orneus. He was a blood drinking vampire that came at night. There is a legend too in the Levant of a vampiric type creature, which I think was Orneus was one of them. And it says that they can't be seen during the day. They can't come out at the, in the daytime. Now, why is that? Same thing in Dacia, which the Romans called Romania. And the Romans even said Dacia, to the east of Dacia, they had a name for it, which meant night. And they said that that is where the life of these creatures was, was at the, at, in the east side of Dacia at night, which we know now is Romania. And there's even a legend that a werewolf, I've said this before, when it's killed, becomes a vampire. Now, I asked Gerald about that, and he says, I've never heard of that. He goes, but I have seen these people that should be dead still alive and looking like they're half zombied out because their flesh is falling off. And they have to go to the temple and bathe in that dark water and get themselves cleansed for, for this devil, the devil, whatever the other, can heal them. 
because they should be dead. And Dick Richard says Shavim, which is Hebrew. That's a, actually that's a that's a demon. Yeah, that's what that is. It's like a shaitan. Jer Jer Paul says there was a guy that killed his mother. He claimed that she was a vampire in Portland, Oregon. It was just on the news a couple days ago. I just had a woman reach out to. Well, she, I'm going to take credit for it. But she reached out to Nellie and said that her mother was a vampire. And Tony got a report of somebody saying that their dad was a werewolf. And Anthony, you know about this one, Alan Kerrville, a guy got in touch with us, used to be in our chat all the time, said that his uncle was a werewolf and he killed people. Mm -hmm. Another guy told us that he witnessed his uncle transform right there in his garage while they were lifting weights. Sugi, it is uh, live stream number two. Uh, two this is. Which what, one is that? Uh, what is she asking? Sugi wants to know what the interview with the werewolf is. Um, it, it's, it's called under, impromptu werewolf stories. Yeah, it's it's under the live streams. Hang on, let me get you the number real quick. And then I did a Q and A afterwards, and then Chris Garitano was in the chat, and he jumped on, and then toward the end there. Uh, Paul Sinclair, the, the werewolf guy. I say werewolf guy. He's a really good guy. I talked to him earlier today. Yeah, Gerald's story is uh, live stream on. number 218. Number 218. Live stream. It's called Impromptu Werewolf Stories, but that title is subject to change. Mystical Wonderland says, Pastor Dave Bryan on the death of Anton LaVey says that the LaVey's were vampires. Yes, I believe that. JV, J, JVG says, I was confused about when Gerald or whatever said there wasn't a difference between werewolves and vamps. What he meant by that, though, is spiritually, like the other that comes in. It gives you what you want, basically. Whenever, yes, Charlie, good night. Whenever, you know, these things come in and do what they do, um, I'm pretty sure, like, they, they, some people say, well, it's super painful to be a werewolf. It looks really painful, whatever. Uh, Gerald said that, not really. It's not that bad. It's shape-shifting isn't like the movies. And the other does give you this, this sort of ability to resist pain. So he goes, so these people that are saying that it's super painful or whatever, he goes, that's not true. That's what he said. But he said that it wasn't for him anyway. But he said it depends on your tolerance of pain. Yes, Brother Heck, that's what I was told. The warlocks were more powerful than both because they had the properties of both. I learned that from uh, Joel. Jim Bob says, again, love the free flow of ideas. This is always moving. That's what the show is about. Mm -hmm. We don't confine ourselves to whatever. We could be talking about a reptilian creature in the swamp, and next thing you know, we're up in the skies above Utah. It just depends. Wherever we get you know, the wind blows, that's where we go. Valerie says, did he mention any popping? Yes. Actually, that's a very good question. Um, he said that when they move and change and stuff, there is a popping noise because it's their body popping into place and blah, blah, blah. Tripping up on you. I totally agree. God and Jesus is most powerful. I'm so blessed. Yeah, so Paul Sinclair, he came on and we talked and he, he was on his, it was funny because I sat down to do my Facebook live because I had to talk about this gentleman that was, I don't want to call him a gentleman, this jerk that's been going around doing and saying what he's been doing. And so I sat down to do it and guess what? Paul Sinclair was on doing Truth Proof with, with, with Les, his co-host, good guys. And then Barton was on walking around the LBL with Letitia. So I was watching both. And so I just waited for both of them because I think it's only polite. I waited for both of them to finish before I did my live. JVG says, coincidence between El Paso vampire stories and the new vampire game that takes place there. What vampire game? What are you talking about? What is it? 
And then somebody says they have to sacrifice to gain more power. Yes, that is true. Brother Heck, that is a very good question or, or, or statement. They do do that. Eighty six, what was it? What did he say? Uh he well, the last comment of his I saw was asking about if you saw or what do you think of the um Shadow figure? Yeah, on your last live stream. I I, I had, had um I don't know. Th that's old hat to me, dude. I mean, that happens all the time. I mean, th at one time, th th this is no bull. I mean, I had Steve Stockton on. I haven't talked to him in a long time. Um, but Steve Stockton was on the show. And there was a wolf howl, very audible. And Steve stopped because he thought that it, he was talking about some ghost train robbery or something like that. I don't remember what it was, like an outlaw. It was a ghost story. Um, pretty compelling stuff he's always got. And Steve stopped because he thought that it was some sort of like, you know, thing we use for the show to stop, you know, from talking. Hey, we're going to take a break. But y'all know we don't take no break here. We just keep going. That taking break stuff is mm, you're doing all that. That's for weak people. <laughs> but, you know, he, it was like a, it was a howl. It was a wolf howl. And, and it's on the show. And multiple people heard it. And they, I can probably go back. I have someone now that's been going through catalog, cataloging all my lives so that that just doesn't say what kind of stories we're talking about. It goes into detail or whatever. And there was another time, and I'm not kidding, right here above my, I believe it was my right shoulder. There was what appeared to be a wolf head that came out of the wall. I am not joking. I am not kidding. I didn't believe it until I looked at it. And you could see it kind of on the video. Like the video kind of looks kind of like it, like something's wrong for a minute. And then it's like a wolf something. It looked like a wolf head. I mean, it's what it looked like to me. But I don't know. It was weird, man. And I can't tell you which episode that was. You'd have to go back and watch all the live streams to find it, you know. Um, and then at one point we had in the studio, me and Anthony and Tony kept seeing something moving. And I even saw a full bodied apparition walk by the door. And when I did the Brazilian exorcist, I encourage you to go back and listen. To that. That's a pretty good, uh, you know, that's when I heard the weird language that was coming from the other side of this wall. Now I shouldn't even been able to hear that because this is a soundproofing we got all around this, this side of the wall anyway. Um, so there's some weird things that have happened. It was very weird. I've been here by myself, and I heard somebody clear their throat, and I'm like, the hell was that? You know, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I was on the phone earlier with Matt Imps from Planet 412 because <clears throat> we've been working together, and we were talking about, you know, our experiences and, and how sometimes you will feel the presence of this thing, whatever it was that I saw, you'll feel it. Like it's it's around, you know? Um I don't know what that is, man. Joanne, I'd love to hear it. But, you know, I, it, it's weird, though, because, like, at one point, you know, that we were, like, the lights, they, they, they don't do it now, but for a while there, they were like, they would. this one would turn off, and then this one would be on, and that one would be off, and this one would be on, and you're going, like, what is going on here? The light would turn on and off, you know? And I couldn't figure it out. I was like, why is this happening? Something, something was wrong. You know, I, I don't know what it was. And, and there was, we, we checked the bulbs. We did everything we could electronically to see what was going on. Here's another weird thing, which I haven't told you. There was a time, a couple times where we recorded. And during the recording, we played it back and we heard like Latin. It gives me the, oh, the, the heebie-jeebies. Look, I'm flexing. There he is. He's doing it. He's talking about fighting. He's talking about supplements and everything else. He's a crazy man. He's one of them Joneses. He's Jerry Jones of the paranormal. He's Alex Jones. Yeah, he's Jim Jones, the cult leader. He's a Jones. He's one of them Joneses. Some, some kind of Joneses, some kind of bad, something or another. Something, something dark side. That's him. But uh, anyway, a bunch of weird stuff because we talk about this stuff. But I'm not worried about it. I wear the Saint uh, Benedict. I do, you know. 
And I'm not afraid. I fear no evil. Neither I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. I don't ever get afraid and walk out and go, ooh, I'm scared. No, dude. Mm -mm. No, no, no. There's no fear. Although I do believe in this. I do believe when it says in the Bible and in the Quran and in many, many holy books that you should never lay down in a house alone and sleep. It says that. Go look it up. The Cutler, he says, for the new camera and to support the show, thank you so much because we are trying to... It's been, it's been stressing me out, man. I didn't want to have to ask and just say, look, man, you know, we need to get this equipment and we need to do this because there are some things that we got... Are you all right? Yeah. What was that call? Uh, it's off the door, okay? Oh. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's just one of those things where I just have to... Um, we have to sometimes, you know, one of my fellow YouTubers just said, don't be afraid to ask your, your, your audience for some help to get what you need. And I try not to. And people think because I have, you know, I wear gold on me that I, oh, well, he's got money. He got, you know, whatever. Like I said, I have money tied up in a lot of things. And right now I don't have $2,000 to get the equipment we need. So, you know, that's something that I don't have. But we may not do the conference. If these people don't knock it off, knock their shit off, you know, then. So Elastic Machinery says Billy Corgan has two shapeshifter experiences. Yeah. A lot of people in Hollywood do. A lot of people in Hollywood have seen things. I have friends. I've met people who who were in bands. Um, I've met so I've met in my life. I've met a lot of famous people a lot and It's just they're there and you are working or whatever you're doing and I just go and talk to them because I can track up a conversation with anybody and I talk to them and it's like we're old friends and Sometimes you can get them to tell you some weird stuff Some weird wild stuff and that that is something that a lot of people say that they're reptilians and vampires in Hollywood and even vampire, reptilian vampires. <laughs> Valerie Guy says, Josh, you have worth in this community, so stop making excuses like you don't. I'm not saying I don't, I don't have worth. I'm just saying, like, I don't, like, you know, come out here and ever ask for anything. But we do need to get some equipment. We have a lot of things we got to take care of. Um, we just had to have our contractor come and take care of the lighting because we couldn't see in the in the uh, storeroom. It's like pitch black in there. So we had to get a flashlight to try to move around and there's boxes and stuff in there. And we got organized and then we got another shipment of stuff and we couldn't even get it undone because it was dark and they couldn't figure out what was going on with the lighting. So we finally got it done. So hopefully this week we will mail everything out that needs to be mailed out to whoever it needs to be mailed out to. But unfortunately I saw some things that went missing which really pees me off because I have to go in now and take inventory and see what may have been taken from us. It never fails, people. It just, it's always these, I no, don't know, man, whatever. Guess they needed it more than us. Sarah Jane says, I'm so glad you got to ask some follow-up questions. And Gerald Nelly is so observant. Asking questions after an encounter is a great format. Much love. Yeah, Nelly's pretty special. Nelly's a sweetheart. That's another thing. It's like these people, they always got to attack my wife. They always got to say something bad and be mean to her. And it's like, whatever. They can't stand to see people happy. They can't stand to see good things happening for people. When, when good things happen, me and Matt talked about this earlier today. When good things happen to, to, to my fellow podcasters, we're happy for each other. We celebrate it. We're glad. You know? Text hit, you know, 5,000, and it was like, I was on the show with them, and I was so I'm, – I'm glad. And if Matt or Tex or Barton or any of those guys surpass me and they end up at 50,000 and I'm at 30, 40, so what? We're all on this train ride together. And the, the quicker everybody can learn that and come together, we're all one. This is two. We're all one. And when people learn that, once you figure it out, once you come to the conclusion that we're all one, when you hurt someone, you're just hurting yourself. And that's a selfish way to look at it. But if that's what it takes, well, then whatever. Think about it. 
You're not cutting that person. You're cutting yourself. We're all together trying to find the answers to what's going on. Why can't we be nicer to each other? Why can't we accept each other's differences? To me, ideas like racism, sexism, and all this other isms or whatever, those are like archaic ideas. When you start to think about how we are all together. And that's another reason why I like Matt, because Matt, he can relate to me. Like Matt grew up in a, in a tough area like I did when I became a teenager and had to move from the country. And he's biracial. He's half Lebanese. I'm half Hispanic. I mean, we understand growing up with two different cultures. It's just a, it's a thing, you know, between people like us. But it gives you another understanding of other people and the different dynamics. I suffered for being mixed. I grew up in the Old South. It really was a cotton town. And I was called a breed more times than I can count. And as a kid, I just thought it was normal. And I watched my parents grimace when people would say it. And one day I asked my mom, I said, what, what is a breed? And my mother just was like, don't say that. So I asked my dad, and he says, you. They're talking about you. I said, I know that, but what is it? And he says, well, your mother's Hispanic and I'm white. Not real popular thing, you know, back in those days, back in, you know, when I was born in the 70s. But now it's pretty commonplace, you know. And people will come up with anything they can think of to belittle you or hurt your feelings. And so during this war, they were saying, you're a poo caca head. You're this, you're that. You're, you're the, they called me a dirty, I'm not even going to say the word. I'm not going to say it because it's a racist term. And I said, wow, wow. You went to the little playground for that one, didn't you, voodoo king? Crazy thing. He's the only one that hasn't tried to have peace. But look at his name. Do you think somebody like that's ever really going to want peace? I have reason to believe, too, that this person has been messing with me may have actually been working for the other side. I don't know for sure. I can't say. But And no, I'm not talking about Cluffington. I'm not talking about him. It's a different person who's poisoned the well. So you got to realize these people... They do what they do. They say what they say. And you just got to have a thick skin. You got to be able to let it roll off of you. But what you can't do is just think, oh, I'm just going to block and delete and they're going to go away. They don't do that. They do not do that. Oof, that's a bad number. Somebody jump off or somebody jump on. Um, but one of the things they do do, and I'll tell you this, is that they get more emboldened if you don't call them out, if you don't stop them. They just get worse, like cancer. And they get worse and worse. And when they poison that well, oh boy, it just keeps going. So we as a community have to stick together. And we have to tell them no. We are not going to participate in your madness and your craziness. And we're not, yeah, tripping up on you. Yeah, I saw that. Um, you said doo-doo. Yes, I did, Milius. Um, but, you know, you, you have to be, you have to take a stand. So many people sit the fence when bad things happen, and they just watch it. Watch the world burn. And then it's your turn. And then when then, then oh, now they want to do something. Now they're attacking you, right? Well, well, that's how it is. Ian Michael says, I pray every night before bed, but I do live alone and I don't want to be scared. Don't be scared. You pray. Pray. And if you are so inclined, I'd find someone else to pray with you. See, this is the problem when you get into the 600s. It ends up, that number pops up and I don't like it. I don't like looking at it. You know, there it is. This is there. And we, until we can get it. And then for some reason, this platform and several others like to st stay on it, too. I know there's other people coming and going. Come on. He says, why can't you sleep alone? Well, I just said earlier. Um, that's right, Maynard. Evil wins when a righteous man does nothing. And like I said, I don't expect you to run out and save the planet, save the world, whatever. But why would you sit there and just film something? For clicks and views? 
When it comes to that, I don't give a damn about that. I'm going to do what's right every time. I'm not going to compromise my principles or my morals. And these people have tried so many times. And the reason we win and the reason we won is because we did what was right. We didn't stoop to the dirtiness that these other people were doing, and I'm never going to do that. I'm never going to do that. And when I talk, I'm going to tell you the truth. Some people don't like it. It's a bitter pill to swallow. But I've had to take mine, and I've had to take my bitter pill. It's just what it is. Everybody has to answer. Okay, folks, I got a situation coming up, come up from freaking work. And so I will let you go. I got to run. It's been, it's been grand. Three hours of fun. We had a great time, right? We told stories and this is how it's supposed to be. We're supposed to be able to do this and not have a bunch of problems, not have a bunch of people acting a fool. Um, you know, let them rage till the sky falls. Like I said, we just keep rolling. The PRT train ain't stopping. You're not going to stop it. They can stand in front of it and wave their hands and act stupid and do whatever they want. It's not going to stop. Stay tuned for Tuesday, folks. reading the comments another thing I was going to tell you if you're still still here or still around is for those who are I guess um, <clears throat> I am going to be doing some some interviews that might become smaller like they're not all going to be like an hour you know whatever because I got a lot of those I got a lot of people that I would like to interview, but their stories aren't really that long. They're like 20, 30 minutes. And so I might just start t taking those and, and doing them and then dropping them. The only problem that we've, we've encountered with that is that when we do that, it's going to throw everything off a little bit because it's going to make it like a little more difficult for you to find like the hour long podcast episodes or the three hour long lives because you're going to have to go in between with all these different lives. So we're trying to figure out a way that we can make that happen. And, and have it fall, just fall into place. Um, and we are slowly but surely putting everything onto Rumble. So be, be looking for that too, because eventually once that all gets set up on Rumble, I'm going to start doing at least one show a week on Rumble where you're uninhibited and unrestricted. And I can talk about more, you know, so... Ananaki Bros says, easy fix, make it a playlist on the channel. Yeah, we're trying to figure out how we're going to do that and what we're going to call it and how we're going to, you know, we're just going to try and figure it out because a lot of, some people, they don't know how to work it. And it, it is different from your computer to your phone. I've seen that myself. And so, you know, people will go, well, I can't go back and I can't find this episode and I can't find that episode. You just have to, you know, you got to figure it out. You know, you just got to do it. Donald Fuller, thank you for showing up, man. Two Shadows, thank you for that donation. We appreciate it. 86 is what is Rumble? It's another platform that we use, you know, that we're going to be using, whatever. Yeah, it's an alternate sh uh, social network. I will say this. Thank you to everybody who showed up. We had 754 or something like that, 700 and something people in the chat. Thank you. We appreciate that. And, and I appreciate you guys showing up and doing what you got to do. Um, just always remember, like what I said, um, and I stand by this, you know, there are people out there who are doing all kinds of fake crap. Buying subs, buying views, buying, buying likes, buying comments. I saw somebody the other day, they had it live, and it was like, I mean, it was so obvious. Like, the, 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 the people in the live were like, 
this is most ex- excellent channel, super happy time, number one. Like, come on, dude. Like, what is that? Like, who writes like that? And they were just like, you are the best. This channel is the great. You know, it's like this weird, you know, like weird stuff. And then, I, you know, like, come on, dude. Nobody talks like that. Like, really? And thank you to everybody who's helped us get to where we're at. The 33,000, I mean, we couldn't do it without you. Yeah, we lost some people along the way because they don't like what I say and they don't like the truth. But, oh well, so what? It's going to be what it is. And no, no sooner did I say that than Mo says, you are the best. <laughs> Josh is great. Yeah, Mo, thanks. Was... <laughs> but he always does that. He always says that stuff. And he says, laugh out loud. <laughs> you're, but you do. You always do that. So. <laughs> Dave Buckles. This is super great channel. <laughs> great number one channel. Yeah, exactly. Uh All right, man. I'm getting out of here. Just reading the comments, folks. It's just it's 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 been a ride. Thirty three thousand, but we'll hit thirty four probably about next month, and then the next month we'll have thirty five, and we'll just keep going. It's just going to keep going, and and you know it'll just hopefully eventually we'll just we'll rise above all of this garbage that these people keep throwing at us. Mickey G, I'm glad for that. I'm glad you found Barton and Letitia. They're good people. <clears throat> All right, I'll see you. Good night.